Hey everybody, I uh, wanted to start the show hey uh, wanted to start the show Hold on, echo, echo, echo That's what happens when you have the show up Hold up, let's give a sec, give me one second Alright, hopefully the echo's gone now Alright, so I wanted to start the show uh, a little bit early because Gareth sent in a massive trophy rarity update and we didn't want it, you know, start the show and then pause it for 28 minutes to, you know, do the update. So if you listen to this on YouTube, the update's going to be now. Uh, if you listen to the audio version, which you're not going to be hearing any of this right now, uh, it's going to be in the show. And again, I'm going to say that on the show. But without further ado... Here is the update from Gareth. Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of the Trophy Rarity Update. Um, I'll try to uh, keep the, the timings slightly less than last week, if possible, if at all possible. Um, I don't want to be upsetting Tricky again, um, so we'll jump straight into it. I hope you're all enjoying it. Um, and as it seems customary to do so, we will start at the bottom of the table. Um, it is a little bit as you were at the, the bottom of the table um, for the, the bottom three. Um, so in 24th place, we have one plat Zach, um, yet to score a point or a trophy this year. Um, his latest... His latest trophy was in My Name is Mayo 2. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to complete that game. It's it sat on his profile half finished. So potentially that finger bashing um, could have broken his crossburn, which uh, would explain why he hasn't been using his PlayStation. However, interesting developments. Um, I did notice he was online on his PS4 this evening. So uh, he might be, um, might be getting back into the swing of things. We will wait and see what happens over the next week so he is firmly rooted to the bottom on zero points um, next up in 23rd place is Kalai um, she sat second from bottom uh, didn't earn any point uh, sorry didn't earn any trophies she did earn points this week thanks to some legacy trophies she must have earned she had three points um, she looking at her profile she is playing Ghost of Tsushima, which she seems to have done for quite a while. Um, but looking at it, all being well, she should have that complete by May 2025. She's on five points. Next up, 22nd, Darth Knight. Looking at when he last earned a trophy, which was New Year's Day, it could be uh, that he's recovering from those New Year's Day celebrations. No trophies this week, but four points from Legacy, so bring him on a total of seven. Um, hopefully we can start seeing um, some movement by, Val by Valentine's Day. That would be a, a nice goal. Then we enter the people who are earning trophies and are earning points, albeit next in line, 21st place is Trough 0726. Interesting thing, backstory a little bit about this and this participant. Um, I don't even know whether Tross knows that he's in this competition or not. He messaged, or sort of should he put a post on one of the Trophy Horse threads asking to be a part of uh, Tricky's league table that he does on his um, Trophy Horse podcast. I inadvertently took that as being wanting to be part of the rarity contest. Um, 
added him, did all his stats, and it was only after that point, after two weeks, that I realised I'd read it wrong. Um, but so he might not even know whether he's participating in this or not. But I've added him in. I can't be asked to take him out. So whether he likes it or not, he's in for the long haul, um, and he is playing a bit of dead space. Um, not, I mean, he's, his rarest trophy this week is eight hit point oh nine percent. So nothing too impressive there. But you know, it's three points this week, eleven points in total. So uh, well done, Trot. If you if you are listening and do know whether you're in this or not, good luck. Next up in twentieth place. Uh, yeah, 20th place is departed 570. Um, back from holiday, looking to make gains. Um, nice little plat in The Last of Us, part one. Um, 24 points this week. Total of 33. Um, but Light Tross has been playing Dead Space remake. And his rarest trophy is Wishbone, which is uh, 24.66%. Next up is Tricky Mick. Um... I mean, what do we say about Tricky this week? Um, again, no qualifying trophies, yet does make 15 points, bringing him to a total of 41. Um, rarest trophy is down from about 88%. He's actually got that down substantially to 55.20. Funnily enough, he messaged me to say he thought he got a rare trophy, but Numbnuts was looking at the... Uh, PSN rarity and not the uh, PSN profiles rarity. So uh, unlucky. Um, but yeah, he is, he's definitely the weakest of those trophy whores um, hosts when it comes to trophy legitimacy or trophy rarity, whatever you call it. But I'm telling you something you all know anyway, water is wet and all that. So uh, yeah. Next up is Riley. Uh, the Brain, 76. Quiet week for him. Three points, bringing him to a total of 43. Um, not played a great deal. Started a couple of games this week, but uh, much like the rest of his profile, they're incomplete. 28.90% um, completion. Um, not uh, not the greatest, um, but yeah, it's at least it's something. That's all we can say. It's something, um, and he was playing a bit of. We were here together. Live entertainment was his rarest trophy at forty eight point two six percent. Next up, we got Stink Palm Jared. Um, it was an okay week for Jared. Nothing too. Great, nothing too bad. 11 points, total of 53. Um, playing a bit of Among Us. I can be your angle, 13.59%. Um, yeah, so it's it's not too bad. It could be worse, could be better. A bit like his uh, Amber Heard rhymes, really, in that regard. So, uh, yeah, so he's 53 points. Um, next up is Diego, who is actually separated the little love triangle that had been going on between Homer, Jared and Riley. Those two were, in, those three I should say were inseparable all contests but now Diego has come between them um, and they've disrupted their little threesome that they've had going on. So Diego has been making gains. He's actually um, he was slow start. He joined a little bit uh, late, a week or so, week or so late. Um, but he looks like he's back earning his customary two platinums a week. So I'm sure he'll be looking to creep up the table. Um, so yeah, this guy this guy plays games. So watch out for him. Those people that are uh, above him currently, because it may not last. He had twenty five points this week. And his rarest trophy was the Platinum in the Caliso Protocol. So well done on that milestone. Um, next up, Homer has had a, uh, a little jump up. Um, I think he thought it was going to be a little bit better than what it was. Um, 
a lot of effort goes into that platinum for infamous but not reflected in the points that he's earned only seven points this week um but like i said he has broken free of the hand holding of jared and um and riley so um but yeah so his little trip back to uh Back to 2008, didn't prove that fruitful, to be fair, with only seven points again, and given a total of 59. I think he's going to be starting Brink next week. Sadak, um, dual console player. I thought he'd be a bit higher than this, if I'm honest. Um, sort of towards the lower end of the table. Um, I've had a look, I'd look him in on... The Loot Bros leaderboards, both on the Xbox side and the PlayStation side, um, top five in both. Um, plays a lot of shit by the looks of it, um, hence probably why he sat sort of below mid table. You know, not many qualifying trophies, um, and he, but he, he only scored five points this week. So he is a little bit of a gap between him and Homer. He's on eighty three, playing a game I've never ever heard of in my life. My first practice, Hatsune Miku, Project Diva, Future Tone. Hmm. Maybe wait for a sale on that one. Um, next up is MZ Nitro. Um, poor week by his standards, really. 17 points, but he has got into the triple figures. He's, he's entered the triple figure, 100 points. He is on 100 points. Uh, his rarest trophy was... Forging my own path in WWE 2K22, 15.79%. And he has, like I mentioned in the write up, this little bromance with Daryl where they keep swapping places. Oh, you no, you take over. No, 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 honestly, you take over. So this time he has fallen behind Daryl this week. I'm sure he'll be uh, um, catching up. But that is if he did say he struggled with his internet. Um, but that's what happens if you don't pay your bills. So uh, get that sorted, and you might go past Daryl again. So as we move on, so Daryl, um, slow start really for Daryl. I expected a little bit more from him, if I'm honest. However, 27 points is nothing to be sniffed at. Um, it's a shame, really, that this contest isn't involved in... Um, we don't offer points for uh, trawling through boxer shorts in Outback Barnes to pick up DVD copies of Batman v Superman. If that was the case, Daryl would be winning hands down. Unfortunately, it's not. So we are going to have to stick to playing games, and uh, Daryl needs to do that a bit more rather than um, going out looking for looking for them, perhaps. But. Uh, Again, he's gone down a trip down memory lane with his rarest trophy playing Dead Space 2, the nanny. 19.32%. Ahead of Daryl is another of the Loot Bros hosts. Um, Joseph, Mr. TMNT. And another one of the uh, group's platinum dodgers. Um, completion rate of 29.10% on his PSN profiles and his last pa last platinum actually was back in uh, September in Shredder's Revenge um, and with a name like Mr. TMNT84 if you don't get the platinum in Shredder's Revenge you know, you're know you going to have some serious questions asked of yourself um, looks like he has started another three games this week and trophies in all of them um, and that has given him a 36 point increase and he's now pulling away from Daryl um, slightly he's on 148 points with a latest trophy in Cobra Kai 2 more rats at 13.7% next up a drop um, Corey um, again another late start as the competition uh, after the first week of him playing looked like he would be a serious threat to the top table I think it was 111 points he had um, his game time looks to be have, have been limited certainly this week um, but it is quite fitting that um, him and Joe are next to each other so they've uh, seen as they, they do a lot of gaming together um, a lot of other things together I guess as well but um, yeah he's doing a bit of um, World War Z 
and his Renault Trophy was a waste of time, 13.24%. Um, let me see, where, how many were we on? Okay, top 10 now. And top 10 is JT. Um, it's, well, what do I say about JT? I mean, it took him three weeks to work out, you know, basically wake up and smell the coffee and realise how the competition actually worked. Um, but since he achieved that milestone, um, he's been flying, to be fair. Um, he's got an abundance of ultra rares at, at nine, which I think is the most in the uh, competition. Um, and he's making sort of good gains at the table. He had um, 22 points, bringing him to 100 and, 157 uh, for the week. Um, Treasure Hunter and King Hearts Melody of Memory was his rarest. Um, so yeah, so he is looking good unless I make any rule changes and it takes him another three months to work out what has gone on. Not... Sounds right, he was not, he wasn't 10th, he was 9th. Did himself did him out of a position, so um, up into uh, eighth, and that is yield. Um, yield is what did the yield do? Yield, mod, yeah, fairly moderate week for him. Thirty two points. Um, probably suffered from sticking his eight hundred ninety seventh hour into uh, Deep Rock Galactic. Um, that probably caused him to uh, not earn as many points. Um, but on the plus side, still living on the uh, on the accolade of having the rarest trophy of the contest, which obviously is a notable achievement in its own right. Um, can he make a push to the uh, catch up his trophy hall co-host? Um, well, one thing's for sure, the other one won't be catching it. But um, again, like last week, he had a rarest trophy in final station. It was, I can't remember what it was last week. This is this time it's Bob's story. It was another guy's story last time, but this is Bob's 7.86%. Um, next up, CJ. And CJ has this unbelievable knack of sniffing out spam that still qualifies somehow. I don't know how he does it here, but it's, it's a pretty remarkable asset to have um, I sort of liken it to the sense a tramp would have of smelling over, smelling out leftover chips you know 3am on a sort of after following a Saturday night out or something yeah but uh, he does it he's had 46 points this week he's up to 228 points now so he's uh, putting those uh, he is putting those figures in which you'd expect from number one trophy hunter in Australia um, his rarest trophy was peerless marksman um, in Forspoken 12.75% um, next up was Marky Fraser so it took me four weeks to actually tag I kept re referring to as Marky Fraser but I didn't realise he was actually in the group as Mark Fraser so on me that is but yeah it took me four weeks to tag him um, because that's how long it took him to pluck up the courage to post on one of the threads to let me know. But there we go. Um, obviously, as a platted MotoGP 22, and obviously it was must have been that good. He's actually gone back to the past and started a MotoGP 2019. Um, I would have probably done him the other way around if it was me personally. Um, but anyway, each to their own. Um, he's also started another game, which I, you know, I'm very interested in, Football Manager 2023. Um that game nearly ruined my life in 1997. Um, but that's another story. Um, but he had 64 points um, this week, which is a really good good amount. 231 points in total, so three points ahead of CJ. And he had a really good trophy, rare trophy, at 2.0% in Gems of War. Um, a bit of a surprise, this one. You might... Uh, when you've looked at this league table, you might have been surprised to see this name down in fifth place, and that is Dupes25. And as I predicted a couple of weeks ago, when he got his Persona 4 Golden Trophies, I said there might be some decay, and obviously, lo and behold, his, his, 
his ultra rare trophies have dropped quicker than officer Megan Olds knickers after a staff social and uh, and that is what has dropped him out of the top three um you know maybe maybe next week he ought to concentrate on putting some miles in his controller rather than the miles in his legs um judging by his face but but um Minus 33 points. I never thought I'd see a figure as low as that. But yeah, minus 33 has killed him. He's down, not up, he's down to 277 points. And uh, it's quite an achievement in itself, actually, to be that low. Um, and at that current rate of scoring, the likes of Tricky, Homer and Jared sort of may overtake him sometime in June. Um. His rarest trophy of the week was Reunion in Dead Space Remake. Another one on the, the Dead Space, Dead Space uh, train. Number four for me. So I've dropped again. Um, another play. I've dropped last week. I've dropped again this week. Um, and I've actually had a good week. I did, I did 78 points. I've dropped a place. Um, it could have been better, but... You know, my sales director has been off, so I've been filling in, working the weekend, working evenings. I've had to go up to London sort of twice um, for sort of an overnight stay for two days last week. So, I mean, I could there could be excuses, but, you know, I don't want to make excuses because of the old adage. This is, you know, my boss taught me this saying, and he, you know, excuses are like assholes. Everyone's got one and they all stink. So we move on. We don't make excuses. We move on and I'll try and be better next week. And uh, yeah, try to try and increase that. But I'm on 337 points. So, and I'm kind of in between. I'm like miles away from third place and I'm quite a way away from fourth as well, who are on 277. But my rare trophy was practice makes perfect in kickoff revival. And that, by the way, was by accident. I, when I was up in London, I took my Vita with me just on the off chance. And I went to the gym at six o'clock in the morning, having breakfast at eight, meeting, meeting one of the directors. And uh, so I went back to the room about half seven, I had a shower and quickly just I had 10 minutes to kill. So I put the Vita on. I thought, well, is there anything I could play? And I just put on this, the kickoff, which I haven't played since 2017, looking at the trophy. Pack. And suddenly I just sort of, popped about three trophies all about all decent like as well ultra rare or very rare so that bailed me out big time on the other hand so yeah so that's my rarest trophy of the contest as well by the way so next up is third place and it's alex from trophy horse um really strong showing from alex this week 123 points um his policy of um adopting the ploy of playing games suited to this contest ps plus ps extra and actually it's not ps extra ps plus only at the moment because it can't be ps extra because tricky hasn't delivered on his uh, christmas presents that he said he was getting you know he said that live on the show that he was getting yield and alex but uh, we're in february now by the way so two months they've been waiting for their christmas presents so uh yeah if he gets that, he may get even more points, more rare trophies, but he has got a decent one in Axiom Verge 2, which was obviously a PS Plus offering last week. Um, yeah, so I wonder what will be next for, uh, for Alex. Number two, he was last week's number one, and it's Redbeard Rick. And he is a bit of a surprise that he dropped down um, I thought he'd be once he got to the top, he'd probably be uh, be staying there. Um, but he has been overtaken, and we'll come to that in a moment. But um, seventy six points, so still a decent showing. Um, but uh, one thing you might not know about Rick actually is, um, if you're not friends with him on Facebook, is that he likes to share some of his beloved classic films with his with his son on a Saturday night. They, they have a nice little take away a pizza or something a nice nice dessert and they, they're watching a classic film so judging though by his recently played games arkham city and skyrim for about the 16th time 
Perhaps Groundhog Day could be uh, your next film to enjoy together. But his rarest trophy is uh, Liberation in 60 seconds. So at 2.83. And again, that is his rarest trophy of the contest as well. Anyway, so Meese Goatslot, also known as George Smith. Again, I only found that out this week, that that was his real name. I didn't realise he was in the group either, but I kept referring to him as Meese Goatslot, which was stupid because I don't... It's a bit of a stupid name. I don't know what it means, but um, but I'll call it whatever he wants to call it. But so yeah, he he he, pro- he said he reckoned he could get to the top, and he has got to the top. He's seven points clear of Rick on four hundred and seventeen. Rick's on four hundred and ten. I forgot to mention that he had one hundred and thirteen points this week. Um, so really, really good, good showing. Um, uh, what makes it even more impressive is that he obviously has an aversion to uh, ultra rare trophies because he's on zero so far, which is on a par with Tricky and Kalai and not the people you want to be associated with in this type of contest. Um, however, that's off to the lad because to get to 417 points with no additional ultra rares is, uh, is quite an achievement. So well done to him. Um, that's the league table. Um so hopefully um, everyone's happy with that. Would I'll just quickly... This has gone on for already too long. It's gone on longer than what the, the last one. Someone joked earlier saying, oh, it should be 22 minutes. We're already at 24. So apologies. I'm just going to have to get him to stick it in at the end, aren't I? Um, so top five rarest trophies... I'll try to be quick on this one. Top five rarest trophies of the week, starting in reverse order, is... Uh, number five is Meese Goats a lot, or George. Super hot stand ready and that was get red ending in every level of the speed runner t challenge number four was alex in 100 percent apocalypse flasks in axiom verge 2 at 4.41 percent 4.414 percent 4.414 yeah find all apocalypse flasks number three liberation in 60 seconds by rick at 2.83 percent which was rescue someone from the bandit and at number two, well, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you, Marky Fraser. But Gems of War, 2.80. And that was for reaching 40,000 total underworld renown. Whatever that means. No idea. Um, number one, my accidental um, trophy in Practice Makes Perfect on Kickoff Revival at 1.97%. So that brings... For the top five various trophies of 2023, we've got a couple of new additions. So five, it's still JT with his uh, Team Sonic Racing Platinum. Rick just replaces his 60 seconds trophy with Liberation by knocking 0.003 off it or something. Um, Marky Fraser is at three with 2.0 with what he's just achieved. Well, I'm happy for you in Gems of War. Again, just knocking a little fraction off that. I come in at number two with my kickoff revival, but yield still has the 1.15% um, rare, rarest trophy on deep space, deep deep space, deep rock galactic, but earns, earns silver promotion for all dwarves. Um, and then the final thing is just to go through the um, platinum. So not as many last this week as there was last week. Um, and some of them are, I mean, they're not the most impressive list of platinums i've ever seen so i'll start with the least rare i was i was in two minds whether to um whether to include this one or not but looking at the rest of his profile i thought this was i've got to i've got to go for it because it's the best of a uh, bad bunch but sadak in my name is mayo three it's a 97.07 percent platinum rate um Next is Diego uh, doing Super Stardust Portable on 67.18. Departed 570 for The Last of Us Part 1, so 4840. Diego again for the Callisto Protocol, so that's a quite a nice one. The last two are nice ones, aren't they? The Last of Us Part 1 and Callisto Protocol. Um, Mies Goats a lot, 21.16 for doing the Trine Enchanted Edition Platinum. And the rarest platinum of the week in the group was by Homer to get his seven points all week in Infamous, 10.61%. So there you have it. Well done to everybody who got the got a platinum this week and well done to everybody for 
participated. Sorry, it's long again. I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep it shorter next time, but it's only because it was a little bit extended because I've got. All right, there you guys go. We're going to be starting the show very shortly. Echo, echo, echo. Hold on, I'll get mute so I can get rid of the echo. Okay, echo should be gone. Echo gone. All right, good. Uh, we're going to start the show sir, shortly. I uh, just got to get up with uh, Alex and Yield and get them on a call, and then we'll be starting the show very shortly. Thank you for guys tuning in to the Rarity Update. Stay tuned for episode 558.
You are listening. Welcome to Trophy Wars, episode, this is, uh, this is episode Welcome 558, again. I'm your host, Chicky Mick, alongside with me, the man, the myth, the legend, it's Alex. Yeah, I got nothing. He brings the awesome, it's I yield to no one. So, um, you know, I have to say, I'm quite proud of Alex so far this year. What is that for, sir? I would have to say, Alex is back. Alex is back. You're you're you're, you're pumping out trophies. You're pumping out platinums. This this kind of hasn't been you the last few years. Alex is back. I think I got what fourteen platinum trophies last year. So I mean, I went back and played a lot of the shovel knight stuff in the DLC. So that kind of held me up a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I got what? Well, you know, I, I think three or four so far this year. Three this year. One of those I did most of the work last year in December, which is Guardians of the Galaxy. But I I, I, I couldn't fit it into all of last year, but I did uh, manage to get over the goal line early 2023. But uh, but yeah, I'm trying to trying to keep up with everybody, not necessarily in the um, backlog beatdown, but in the rarity competition. That's where I'm really trying to put all my eggs as best I can. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I don't think I knew going in I didn't have a shot for first place because people are going really hard at this, which is good. But I was like, I, I don't. But I think I got a shot at the most rare trophy. Fingers crossed I can keep it up. I got 10 months to go. I think I might have it. All right. Yeah, I mean, if you can stick with Deep Dark Galactic, you can mine that for some pretty rare ones. So, and potentially uh, the rarest. I'm down. I'm down to what? Three trophies? One, two, three counting the platinum. Yeah. So, I, I think I can get the platinum by the end of the year. And that would be the rarest. All right, well, speaking of the rarity, if you're watching this on Twitch or if you're watching this on YouTube, the rarity update was already uh, done. Uh, it was 28 minutes long, so we figure, I figured I'm going to put it at the start of the show for the, uh, for the Twitch and for the YouTube, and we're going to patch it into the show uh, at some point, and I'll, you know, obviously I'll lead into that, but uh, for the Twitch audience and the YouTube audience, uh, Alex, do you know you're in third place right now? Yeah, Gareth said I had the because I read the tro- the the write up on Facebook and he said that I had the biggest gains of the week, and uh, that put me in third place above Dupes and Gareth because uh, Gareth was only ahead of me by like three points. So um, I thought I had a good, pretty good week. Luckily, I'm gonna have another big week this week because the um, the last six trophies I have for Axiom Verge I think are all. Or I should say, Axiom Verse Two are all ultra ultra rares, so that's gonna do me pretty well this next week. That's pretty good. Uh, I do want to say that uh, I am gaining points, but I'm not earning trophies, which to me is a little weird. Um, well, because it's well, your your legacy trophies. Yeah, my legacy trophies have gotten me. I think it's either forty one or forty four. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'm trying to look at the list right now. Uh, it's, it's all your common trophies you're playing, or it's all your your. Well, as we like to say the the, the rat plats. They're all common. <coughs> well, okay, the rat plats or aside. Uncommon. Sorry, common you get zero. So it's all your uncommon trophies that you're only you know. Well, no, you haven't earned a point yet. It's your legacy, yeah. So it's all your common trophies. Well, see, okay, taking the rat spam out of it, okay, because I am sprinkling a little bit here and there when I'm like, if I'm editing a podcast or I'm you know doing something at work or something like that. I'm I'm knocking out like three, four of the rat plats. Like, but I'm not counting those. Um, but as I said to you, yield before we started the show, one of my trophies turned on me. Oh, really? And and I I want to preface this by saying I'm not upset, but I think you both can agree with me on what I'm about to say. I earned a trophy in God of War Ragnarok, which has a rarity. According to the PSN of twenty two percent, 
Well, the PSN's di- way different than what PSN right. profiles is and, it's running. Because and, and, PSN profiles is, is names that have been registered on the website or searched on their website, correct? It's not everybody who plays on Correct. The it's only people that have uh, have a profile on PSN profiles. The rarity on PSN profiles is 55%. So that's a 33% jump. So I messaged Garrett and I said, uh, you know, hey, I got my first you know, rare trophy. And he's like, nope, it's a common. So even a 22% trophy on the PSN still doesn't help me in the rarity contest, but somehow the trophies I've gotten before have got, have gained me 44 points. I mean, I, I, I made this comment to JT in the, the chat the other day, cause he was following up with me from last week about, you know, I, how I had said that, you know, I, I, uh, you know, you don't get trophies, a trophy list attached to your profile until you play the game. So, you know, I, I theorize that maybe that because people, you know, when they add it to their library, that affects the percentage. It doesn't affect the percentage until you actually play the game. Correct. Um, but well, now, now I lost my thought. Um, but I no, 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 I got it back. I talked to JT. It's like, then why don't we use PSN, the PSN instead of um, that would be way too hard to track. Well, okay. Well, I mean, but also, I mean, J, the JT's point was that it's not the people who are on um, PSN profiles are the ones going after trophies, as well as whereas people on the PSN are the ones who are just playing. A lot of them are, you know, maybe more casual. They don't necessarily go for trophies. So his argument was that using PSN profiles was a more representative of the trophy hunting community, community right. overall, as opposed to adding in people who don't necessarily who just play games and don't go for trophies. Yeah, I mean, and like I said, I'm I'm not complaining, but I, I that was just staggering to me because I thought it would be like somewhat closer, but a 33 percent difference that's huge. Uh, Rick says that he's coming for you, yield. Uh, he's got his eye on a couple of rare trophies. Uh, he also says PSN rarity doesn't mean shit. And Garrett says it's your trophies that are about 50 percent that are becoming rare and dropping down into the 49 percent mark. No, I know what it is, but it it just I don't know. It just that must mean that games I played, more people are trying now. Well, yeah, I mean, like maybe games that we played before, you know, like a Horizon Forbidden West. Maybe at some point that goes to PlayStation Plus, and then you know, JT was telling me about the bloat that happens where you get people who start the game because it's free and they try it out and then they stop playing it because they, um, you know, they don't like it or something. And, uh, you know, they obviously get a lesser amount of the trophy, so that affects the percentage. So then, you know, when you get a game, one of those games going to PSN or PlayStation Plus for free, more people, you know, down and play it, it's going to make maybe some of your older games have, you know, some rare trophies because there's a bigger audience for it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just, I, I, I made, uh, somebody made a remark, and we got a comment later in the, uh, in the list of questions where Rick points out, like, I've gotten this long without getting an uncommon trophy. Can I go the whole year? So... I don't know. You can do it. It, it. it That might be like an outside challenge. Like, can I go the entire year without earning an uncommon trophy? You know, know. that could be because, okay, so off the top of your head, as, as it sets right now, are there any games coming out that are like, I'm buying that day one? Uh, Burning Shores? I mean, it's DLC. It's not a full game, but Burning Shores? Burning Shores is what for uh, Horizon? Horizon. Yeah, but you got to figure that anybody that has Verizon is pro. Or her, or for, uh, anybody that has uh, Zero Dawn or um, not Zero Forbidden Dawn. West. Thank you, Forbidden West. They're probably going to buy that DLC, and I suspect it's probably going to be free DLC. So I don't know. Well, uh, I mean, Sony is is marketing as like you know when they say the game's coming to PlayStation this year. That's one of the things, like with Forspoken and all the other stuff in there, uh, Mirage, Assassin's Creed Mirage, they have a tile for Burning Shores. So I think it's going to be bigger than you think, and because their position, they're propping it up as kind of like, not it's, necessarily. It's probably going like, to be like Frozen Wilds would be my guess. It'll be bigger than you, but it, it, so I think they'll definitely charge for it. But yeah. I don't think that every if it's going to be char, you know, pay. I don't think everybody's going to want who owns Forbidden West is going to want to go back and play it. So a lot of people will, but. You know, especially if it's going to be per, for pay, there's you know a wall there. So I don't think everyone's going to take that leap if they have to. Well, I just I just Google 2023 games, and there's two games right off the top that I'm probably going to play, and that's Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and Assassin's Creed Mirage. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot Suicide Squad came out this year. Um, 
And I was looking forward to Skull and Bones, but that got delayed. Um, a game that we talked about last week, Yield, I don't know if you know anything about it, is the day before. That got delayed. Uh, there's question. Oh, is that is that that like zombie ish game? I've seen some stuff floating around this week on the internet about that. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, apparently now there, there's uh, there's a controversy that is, is it even a real game? Uh, yeah, I, that was the, the stuff I saw floating around the internet this week. Uh, so I I mean I haven't been following the news for the day before all week. Uh, but apparently they came out with some kind of. Uh, New story or something saying that it, it proved that it's actually a real game and they showed more footage of it. I don't know. I mean, you go back to like, uh, what was that abandoned game that nobody seems to know anything about and they were supposed to release a gameplay of it and then at the last second they delayed it and we haven't heard a freaking thing since. Also, I, I just looked up another game that comes out. Uh, well, it just got delayed, but uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is coming out too. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, so there's Jedi Survivor. I'll, I'm I've already got that pre-ordered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm uh, I'm going back and you forth gotta, with limited run games gotta, right now, so I might not, I might not get the game because uh, right now they're uh, flagging my uh, my account as fraud. Really? Yeah. Well, okay. So a little behind the scenes, uh, yield. You told me about the collector's edition that limited run games was doing. Uh huh. And, I got one. And, well, see, and I got mine. And then you were having a little trouble getting yours. Yeah. So I went ahead and ordered one for you just in case you didn't get yours. Then you yeah. went, you wound up getting yours. Yeah. Um, but apparently Limited Run Games had a little bit of an issue with their website in which they were charging funky taxes. So I emailed them and said... Uh, you know what's going on with these taxes? These these don't seem right. Blah blah blah. They wound up refunding my money. Okay. Then um, I went on and said, "Hey, can you cancel this order because I already have another one listed?" They said, "Yeah, we're going to cancel it." So someone on their side refunded it weird, in which they refunded the the initial fifteen dollars, but they never actually refunded. The rest of the order on the second refund. Mm. So I reached out to PayPal and said, Hey, I have this email saying that I was supposed to get the refund. The refund never came through. Can you investigate and find out what's going on? They said, Okay, all your proof shows you should have gotten the refund. We're going to issue you the refund. The very next day, I get a, uh, an email from uh, Limited Run telling me, uh, we noticed a chargeback on your account. Can you, you know, can you blah, 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 or your account's going to be on hold, blah, blah, blah. So, like, a couple emails back and forth. I, I mean, I'm sure you guys seen, like, the emails in the in, in the Trophy Horse folder on Dropbox because uh, I have the emails uh, as a PDF. Um, long story short, they told me that they had to, they, I needed to cancel the chargeback. So they could properly refund me. And I said, I don't understand. I have my money. Now you're asking me to give you back the money so then you can in turn send it back to me? That doesn't sound right. So right now we're in an email exchange back and forth. But I think because my account's on hold, they may actually hold my, uh, my second order. And I may not get mm. it. But, it, I mean, doesn't that seem weird to you? Char cancel your chargebacks so we can get the money so we can give you the money back? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Like, just tell PayPal, hey, we made an internal error. Because that's what they said. They said it wasn't a system error. Somebody refunded it uh, wrong. I said, so tell PayPal that, you know, the money is legit. Like, this is a legit thing. Why do I need to give you the money back so you don't have a chargeback? Just tell payback the chargeback's valid and, you know, give the money. Because right now, from what I understand from Limited Run Games, PayPal has paid me, but Limited Run has not paid PayPal. Clear as mud. Yeah, so I, I don't know. But I may not get the... I'm going to get this digitally anyway, so, I mean, I'm going to have the game, but I may never get the thing. And, you may never get your hilt. Yeah, and they may keep the... Uh, 
the what the I don't know was three hundred dollars we paid for it. Uh yeah. So they may keep that. Uh I don't know. We'll go back and forth. If not, I'll just contact PayPal again. And tell them you know I never received the product. It is what it is. All right, so let's do our updated trophy count. Yield, this is all updated? It's all updated, man. Okay, because it was still highlighted on my side. I am level 829, total trophies of 25,069, with a plat count of 669. A lot of 69s in there. Alex, what about you, sir? I am ready to go this week with level 470, total trophy count of 8,443, and a platinum count of 137 in 136 games. And yield, sir. I am a level 487 with the trophy count of 9134. And a platinum count of 163. I got a new one since the last time I was on the show. And what was that, sir? Bug snacks. Bug snacks. Which uh, I have to say, the, the, I'm going to even retract even further from the from the last time I was on the show, and I said it was still kind of dumb. The more you play that game, the the, the better it is. And uh, as my buddy said, that game is way more fun than it has any business being, and I 100% agree with that statement. Uh, Rick's, and, and, and I also 100 percented the DLC. Rick says, bunger, bunger. <laughs> I guess you know what that means? Yeah, I know what that means. Okay. Jeez, poof. I, I don't even think I want to ask. He'll get it. Well, I'm sure he'll get it, but... That, that's all that matters. That's why I did it. Okay, now Matt G is saying, bunger, 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 bunger. See, you play the game, you'll get it. <sighs> All right. And Sid is level 446, total trophies of 5,699 with 157 plats. Uh, update on Sid. I talked to him. Uh, apparently, he is having a uh, recording issue because he records on his phone, and his son dropped his phone in the toilet. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So, I mean, that was a couple weeks ago. I don't know uh, exactly everything that's going on, but uh, I, I, we will have more Sophie Sophie's coming, but we, that's the reason why we haven't had them in the last couple weeks. Uh, what else? That's it. All right. So, let's get into what we're playing. Yield, we'll start with you, sir. Okay. So, a um, little bit of a kind of the same uh i've been playing bug snacks i like i said i i played the game got the platinum then did the aisle of big snacks got those three trophies i've uh, been playing some diablo 3 reaper of souls uh immortals phoenix rising i finished uh a new god dlc which that one's that one's pretty good and then i've dove into mists of the eastern realm dlc and it's not too bad so far i think i like the first one better um Played a little bit of World of Warship Legends, played some Deep Rock Galactic, played some Grip Combat Racing, uh, finished up DLC trophies in Baseball, not DLC trophies, finished up trophies in Baseball Riot, 100% of that. Uh, played a little bit of Watch Dogs DLC and got the uh, RC trophy for that one, so now really it's just the grind trophies. I've been playing through the Final Station DLC, The Only Traitor. I am down to... Two more playthroughs, and I'll have that 100 percented. And then uh, the Brain76 and myself fired up. We were here forever this week. Launched on Tuesday, the 31st of January, and uh, we played it on Wednesday. So hope some of you checked out the Twitch feed. Yeah, I had to. Was- I had to help you and <laughs> rather get hooked up. Apparently. <laughs> Well, yeah, neither one of us realized that they wanted our numbers on the end of it. What's happening to our PSN? It's not working. What the F, man? I, I'm, I'm watching Riley's uh, stream, uh, and, I'm, and I'm going, Riley, did you give him the, the name? He goes, yeah, I gave him the name. I'm like, did you give him the numbers? He goes, what numbers? Oh, shit. Well, I was the same way. I'm like, I heard him go, I gave him the what numbers? And I'm like, what numbers? And I'm like, oh, those numbers. Okay. Yeah, apparently above their PSNs, there was their PSN name plus a number that they were not putting in, so they couldn't look link up together, apparently. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't link up together, because they have your PSN name, and then they throw on four numbers on the end. One, two, three, four. And then that's how you find your buddy, because you can play 
you can play cross platform. You can't play cross gen. So I think that's how they do it. So you could search, you know, if you, if you got a buddy playing on an Xbox, that's how you could search. So, right. Uh, all right. So that's all you've been playing. Uh, for right now, that's all I think of off the top of my head. Like right. I said, I've been playing a little bit of everything. I'm hoping to, to actually finally get into another game. I almost started my last playthrough of Tomb Raider again, and I just didn't get to it. But um, been kind of, like I said, been kind of just diving through some DLC. That was kind of what I wanted to do a little this year was focus on some DLC, and it's kind of what I'm doing. All right, Alex. Well, on Thursday, I played a little bit of Rocket League with Homer and Yield. That's what uh, I kicks, forgot. Kick some ass that night. Don't worry, I got you. Thank uh, you. Kick some ass that night in the win column. Also, uh, the thing they've done, like, so usually in the Rocket Pass, they usually give you the the, the goal score, or at least a really good goal score by level 70, because, like, level 70 is where, like, the all the, re- the uh, unique items top out, and then after that you get the different color variations and everything. But this time, they give you a crappy goal score, like, early on, I can't remember if it's in the 30s or the 40s, but then they hold the cooler ones till later to like 95 and above. So I don't know if they have um, – Psyonix is like, wow, people aren't sticking – you know, they get to a certain level and they stop playing, or at least mo- most people. So let's, you know, stick the better goal scores later on because that's kind of like the crown jewel – like item – when it comes to items, that's the crown jewel of Rocket League is the goal scores because um, that's what costs the most money in the in their marketplace is the goal scores. So um, – yeah, I, I, it's kind of annoying to, you know, because now I'm like, okay, well, now i got to play every day to get up to 90 and above just to get these goal scores because they couldn't give me the good goal score early on. So I'm kind of annoyed at Rocket League. Um, I mean, I do enjoy playing. Like, once a week is perfect, getting together, playing with friends. But it, when I have to, you know, play every day just because you want me to go further in your Rocket Pass, just because you want me to play more. I, I get it on their end, but also as a player, I'm kind of annoyed. Um, but still had a lot of fun with Yield and Homer. Um been playing some Dead Space, and you know, still, I'm I'm not very far in the game. I'm 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 on chapter six now, so I beat three chapters this week. Obviously, Dupes, congratulations, Dupes. He went ahead and got the platinum trophy, but um, obviously, that's been kind of clashing with my my play time through Axiom Verge two, which I'm I'm trying to get through the speed run now, which is going to give me the platinum trophy because I'm going to get all six trophies with the speed run. So, um, but yeah, but most of my a lot of my time has been with Axiom Verge, so I haven't been able to play quite as much Dead Space. But I do, there was one moment, I think it was in the um, the fifth chapter, where uh, I had forgotten this, but there is an enemy that um, regenerates its limbs. There's a doctor on the ship, Dr. Mercer, who creates an enemy that regenerates limbs. So you can, like, you know, you're sitting there like, oh, I'll take care of this enemy. You start, like, chopping off limbs and stuff. And then all of a sudden they start growing back, and you're like, oh, shit. And you have the moment where you realize you have to run. You have to escape this enemy. You can't fight it. And... I'm not going to lie, I don't really like enemies like that, but I understand that it adds to the tension, and, and I understand why they do that. Um, the one, the most annoying part isn't really that the enemy regenerates. The most annoying part is the fact that Isaac Clark moves so freaking slowly, and like sometimes like you'll uh, tap and hold the uh, L3 button to run, but then like you'll like... In your panic, you'll get mixed up and you'll hit it twice, and then he'll start walking again. So you'll do this mix of walk run, um, and so one he runs really slowly, which doesn't make getting away from these necromorphs very easy. But also sometimes it gets kind of like in the heat of the moment, it gets to the point where you <coughs> over tap and overhold the the, the L three stick, and it, it takes him from a run to a walk again. So then you got to hit the button again and hold it down. It's like, oh, come on, man. Um, so really the only moment of frustration I've felt with Dead Space so far, but love the game, still enjoy playing it. And, uh, once I get done with Axiom Verge, I'm kind of just going to focus completely on Dead Space because, uh, I do want to get that, that platinum trophy eventually, but you know, now I just, I got I gotta put most of my focus in Axiom Verge because that's really where I'm going to get my rare trophies for the, uh, the Garrus competition. So Rick, yeah, that's all I've been playing is Rocket League, Dead Space, the remake and, uh, Axiom Verge 2. All right, Rick says he's using Dead Space 2 controls, so hold R- L1 to run. Oh, well, maybe I could, yeah. Maybe it'll help me out a little bit, because uh, the, the stick, it doesn't work so well with with Dead Space. And, you know, it's not that it's terrible. I just sometimes, for me, it's just easy to overclick things, and then I go from walk to run and then back to walk when I'm trying to escape something. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I do that when they assign run to the L3 yeah. or R3. You click it by, double-click by accident. And I get it. Isaac Clark has heavy engineer's armor on, but my God, he runs so slow. He runs so slow. See, I I like uh, in Division Two, like 
if you start moving, you have to click L3 to run. But the second you stop, he doesn't. They don't continue running. Like you have to click it again. So you could you don't have to click it on and off. So that's good. I mean, you can click it on and off as you're running, but it's it's when you stop running, he stops running. So to speak, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. Uh all right. And I have been playing. Uh, I haven't played Division Two much this week. Uh, because they just delayed. Um, the the next update, which was supposed to come out on Tuesday, but they said that uh, through localization processes, which I'm not exactly sure what that means, uh, the update couldn't come out, so they delayed it and didn't give us another date. Um, so that's, you know, a bummer for me. Uh, I was really looking forward to the next uh, season. Uh, I have been playing some God of War Ragnarok, fired up Rock Band 4 a little bit, did some singing. Uh, I was in the mood, so I did some singing. Uh, I can't use my guitar for some reason in my studio because I guess the, there's interference with the Bluetooth, so I can't, uh, the buttons are not triggering when they're supposed to, so can't do that. So I might have to move my Rock Band 4 playing over to my PS4 in my living room, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And some spam games, which you guys really don't care about. All Thank right. God. You know, don't be cranky, all right? Bring the energy this week. I'm tricky. I'm just saying, like, I appreciate the fact that you're not willing to run through all the spam games because, you know, hey, that's your style of play. That's fine. But we're, we're not going to recognize any of the game's names. That's why know? I said That's why I said you you don't care about so. <laughs> just move you're on. right. I don't care. All right. But what you should care about is customary every week or every month. I say every week, every time. Every month on the first week of... A uh, new show. We give you guys the PlayStation Plus games. So for February 2023, your games are going to be Ali Ali World for the PS4 and PS5, Mafia Definitive Edition for the PS4, Evil Dead the Game PS4 and PS5, and Destiny 2 Beyond Light for the PS4 and PS5. Yes, you heard that right. You're getting four games this month. Uh, so let's start with the conversation with Yield. Yield, I remember mentioning Evil Dead the Game when it came out and you didn't seem too hyped. Are you going to give this one a shot? Uh, I'll probably put it in my download list. I know my buddy has it, so if I want to play it or I want to boost, you know, try to boost through it, um, I got somebody who can do it. All right. What about the other games? Uh, well, let me bring it back up. Ali Ali World, so, Mafia, and Destiny. Ali Ali World, no. I'm, I'm not a skateboarder. Uh Mafia, uh, I'll have to look through my my list of backlog games. I may already own it. If I don't, I'm definitely grabbing it. I think it's and on the then, backlog list, too. And then... Uh, Destiny 2? Destiny 2, no. I'm not, I'm not picking up Destiny 2. All right, what about you, Alex? The most likely I will be to... Um, to try any of these is Mafia Definitive Edition because I've heard the Mafia games are fun and I've never played any of them so maybe this is the perfect entry. Oli Oli World is a skateboarding game from what I've seen so I mean I don't know I'm not going to say that I I'm not going to just write it off for that but I'm generally not super into those I've sp- skateboarding is just not my I'm not very interested in it so I may uh, may try that one but most likely that that's going to work pretty heavily against it. I assume that because uh, that's not Destiny. The Destiny thing is more of an expansion, right? It's not, it's not a full game. It's kind of like, you know, um, correct. Inf- infamous it, Festival of Blood. It's not a full game. Uh, it, it, it's one of the additions to the Destiny world. But I, I believe. But didn't we also get Destiny two before for plus? That I couldn't. I don't know. Yeah, but they gave, gave they gave us what Tiny Tina's Wonderlands or something like that. They've given us like they gave us a Borderlands expansion before, right? Yes. Well, was that? But that wasn't uh, the expansion. That was its own game. There's two tiny teams. One's a DLC. One's a full game. We got the full game. Okay. All right. Well, I mean this this is an add on to a full game to what to either Destiny or Destiny Two. I'm assuming Destiny Two. Uh, um, I'm, I'm Destiny researching 2. right now just to see. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm not a Destiny expert, but Destiny Two Beyond Light. Uh, 
according to Google, it says it's the first major expansion to Destiny 2 uh, and released on the November 10th, 2020. So, I mean, I think that, you know, it's nice that it's free, but I think that what that is trying to do is encourage people to get into Destiny. Like, you know, if you're... Can you really be excited to play an expansion if you're not going to play the entire universe? I mean, like, Infamous Festival of Blood, I played Infamous before, and Infamous Festival of Blood was kind of all I needed um, out of Infamous 2. Because that was that was kind of released as, like, a separate part of, of uh, Infamous 2, right? It was after, in that aftermath, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So I, I didn't play Infamous 2, but I did play, you know, Infamous Festival of Blood was enough for me as far as being in that universe. But this, never played Destiny, and, you know... Again, nice they give it to us for free, but if I've never played Destiny and I don't own Destiny 2 in full, then am I really going to be excited to play an expansion that, you know, is kind of cut from the rest of the universe? I, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe people will play it and it'll be their entry into the series and they'll love it, but well, uh, for me personally, I, I, I don't know. I see less of a point to it. Well, I know neither one of you guys will be able to answer this. Maybe the Twitch chat can. Can you play Beyond Light without Destiny 2? You would have to be able to. You would have to be able to. Why else would they give it to you for free? That uh... that that would seem rather silly for them to be like, "Hey, we're going to give you this DLC for free," and oh, by the way, you have to buy the game to play it. That just especially to market it as, "Hey, we're getting four games free this month," but then yeah. in the like the the tiny print, it's like, "But you got to buy Destiny Two to get the fourth one." Uh, now I could totally be wrong, but that just that just it. That's just what it feels like. I'm just Googling it. I, you, what you're saying makes sense. Uh, okay, I just did a quick Google search, and it says Destiny 2 Beyond Light. Uh, the content requires the base game to, to play. Unless they lock you out of the base game. Um. <clears throat> well, it may say that because you... Within Beyond Light, you can access content from the main game or go to a location for the main game. So they may, that's maybe why they require it, is because elements from the main game are tied to Beyond Light. Well, they they but, also, didn't they give us uh, another game, but they called it like the Championship Edition? I think it was a launch PS5 game. They gave us like the Championship Revision, which, uh, Edition, which was like, it was the full game, but it was. Uh, you didn't have access to the campaign and stuff like that. It gave you all the end game stuff. Uh, there was some game like that, but I forget what it was. Okay, so coming from the chat, Matt G says Destiny Two is free to play. So, oh, we'll see. There you go. That answers that question. Uh, it went free to play a few years ago, and Godfall is the game that I was just referring to, where they gave us the end game. That was the launch PS Five game. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, that um, is going to. Uh, yeah, that's basically it's a uh, Beyond Lights a marketing tool for Sony and and Bungie. Yep. All right, <sighs> moving on to our next topic. Uh, uh, some news: PlayStation Plus collection is being removed in May. Uh, this is coming from IGN and written by George Yang. Uh, Sony announced that the PlayStation Games Collection will re be removed from the PlayStation Plus subscription on May 9th. However, members can still redeem the titles from the collection until that date and continue to access them afterwards as long as they remain subscribers to the service. Uh, the collection has been a perk for the PlayStation 5 subscribers since 2020, but will no soon no longer be available. The list of games will be removed. There's a mix of first and third party ones. They include... Bloodborne, Days Gone, Detroit Become Human, God of War 2018, Infamous Second Son, Ratchet and Clank, The Last Guardian, The Last of Us Remastered, Until Dawn, and Uncharted 4. Those are the first party games. The third party games being removed are Arkham Knight, Battlefield 1, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Zombies Chronicles Edition, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, Fallout 4, Final Fantasy 15 Royal Edition, Monster Hunter World, Mortal Kombat X and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Persona 5 was part of the question, but re was removed in May of last year. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, there was a little bit of a debate. I think it was with Gareth. I'm not exactly sure. I'm trying to remember. Uh, but he said that he was going to redeem all the games except for Final Fantasy because he was never going to play it, which I understood. Uh, but I've been a long advocate of saying... 
put these games in your history and your library, regardless if you want to play it or not, uh, because there may come a time in the future that you're going to want to play it or you may want to play it, and it sucked that you have to pay for it then when you could have had it for free. Uh, I don't think either one of you guys is going to object to me saying that. Mm, yes and no. I Ooh. see both sides of the story or fence on that one. Well, could you? I think I think I think the only thing I might pick up is the Last Guardian. I pretty much own everything that I want to play. Yeah, but what if you decide, uh, you know, I want to try this in the future? I mean, it... mm, I, 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 if I ain't tried it yet, I doubt I'm trying it in the future. All right. Uh, I'm not even going to go to you, Alex, because I think you are in agreement with me. Now, now, well, fine. Now, I mean, uh, 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 you assume that, but... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Alex, go ahead. The floor is yours, that's, sir. That's what you do when you assume things. You make an, add an, ass, an, ass, an ass out of you and me. Um, well, not really me. You just made your ass. As long as I'm making ass. an ass out of you, I'm good. Go ahead. Um, but, no, I mean, I went through last night, and, you know, because I remember, you know, the story has popped up for me, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, while I'm on the PlayStation, just on the, the main menu, I'll go and redeem some stuff. So I redeemed some things, most things, but I didn't redeem everything because the Final Fantasy thing, again, I've never played Final Fantasy. I'm sorry. I don't want to play Final Fantasy. I don't ever see myself doing that in the future. And honestly, if I really want to play in the future, fuck, I'll just buy it and chalk it up to a loss. I don't care. Um, but, yeah, I I didn't redeem everything. I redeem, redeemed most things, but, yeah, I understand Gareth saying that because if you're not going to play a game series, like you kind of know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I might pick up West Guardian. I think I had already picked up The Last of Us, but that one's got that. That's got the DLC. That's got the multiplayer still attached to it, doesn't it? I'm not sure. Yeah, The Last of Us remastered for PS4. Remastered had the multiplayer? Yes, it I did. Think so. I, it did. I, I think I think it's the part one that doesn't have the Multiple. multiplayer attached to it. It just has uh, uh, I can't think of what the DLC was called, but the standalone DLC left behind, left behind, left behind that was attached to it for the platinum. Right? My yes. That was the big. That was the big deal about part one is that there was no multiplayer trophies. They took those out. Okay. Uh, all right. That, that that might be the one I end up going back and playing so I can get the platinum in Last of Us. Part one. Yeah, because I just don't want to have to grind through that multiplayer. Yeah, I, I I could be wrong, but I think the server's actually shut down for remastered. I think for the three version, not the four version. That may be true. All right, uh, a little bit of sad news we're going to went into, uh, coming from IGN and written by Matthew Alder. Annie Worshing, which I, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing right, uh, an actress from The Last of Us and 24 has died at 45. Uh, if you don't recognize the name, she played Tess in The Last of Us. Um, as reported by Deadline, she was diagnosed with cancer in 2020, yet her acting career appeared in both Star, Star Trek, Picard, and The Rookie. She's best known for her roles as Renee Walker in the show 24, as well as Leslie Dean in Marvel's Runaways. She was also well known for her outstanding performance as Tess in 2013's PlayStation game, The Last of Us. Neil Druckmann, co-creator of The Last of Us, posted on Twitter saying, quote, I just found out my dear friend Andy has passed away. We have lost a beautiful artist and human being. My heart is shattered. Those are with her loved ones. He also, uh, end quote, he also posted a link to her GoFundMe that has been set up for her family. Um, so, a little bit of sad news. The original actress of Tess has passed away due to cancer. Yeah, and I mean, what can more can you say about that? I mean, someone who passes away in their 40s from cancer, I mean, that's not supposed to happen. Statistically, it doesn't happen, but, you know, this person, you hope they lived as full of a life as they could, but when you're that young, it's just it's just awful. Death is awful in general, but, you know, you want someone to live to an old age, and it just... It doesn't always happen, and it's it's truly terrible. It's there's not much that can be said. All right, uh, moving on. A little bit of a passer topic here, but some good news for people that are looking for them. PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X, and Nintendo Switch OLED versions are now all in stock. This is coming from Chris Reed over at IGN. After years of almost nonstop scarcity, you could finally just go into Amazon and buy a PS5 or a Series X. No request invitation button, no inflated third-party pricing. You could just buy one. This has been a long time coming. 
This console's generation, the PS5, Series S, and X, and to a lesser extent, the Nintendo Switch OLED versions, have been an unusual one to put mildly. Finding current-gen consoles in stock, either in brick-and-mortar stores or online, has been far more difficult than usual. For the average consumer who doesn't follow Warrior64 on Twitter, finding these deals uh, devices in stock was nearly impossible to any point over the past two years. So, if you're looking for a uh, console, you can now go on to Amazon or on to your local uh, brick and mortar store and find one. This is finally good can, news, gentlemen. Oh, I can uh, attest to this right. because I posted in the Trophy Horse chat that uh, I was actually in a GameStop recently. I got one of uh, the kids' uh, GameStop card. Uh, gift card for Christmas, and he was just there to use it, and uh, they actually had the PlayStation 5 boxes on a display, and I was like, oh man, you know, finally I see one in the wild, like a momentous occasion uh, for me, I mean, it's it's kind of silly, but like the fact that it's the first time I had seen one in so many years was, was pretty incredible. Uh, it turns out the, the GameStop employee said, employee said, yeah, Sony pays for that space, so those are, you know, empty dummy boxes essentially, we just have them up there, but then he showed me behind the counter, there's a God of War bundle, uh, PS5 bundle back there, so I actually did see a real PlayStation Five inbox in the store. Um, it was just behind the counter, uh, over the on on a shelf above the counter. Um, oh. They had more. They had more in stock, but they only had the bundles. He said they didn't have the standalone PS Fives. They just had the God of War bundles. I, I plan on doing the same thing, Alex. The first time I see one in the wild, I'm gonna take a picture of it. <laughs> Look, it's real. Uh, okay. So now my question goes to you guys. Uh, I mean, this is more of a pass through topic, but uh, Alex, you were just saying how like they only had the God of War bundles. Um, do you think we're going to see more bundles like this out in the wild before we actually see just the base consoles? I mean, I mean, like go ahead, Alex. Sorry. No, no, you, you go ahead, Yield. I was going to say, I, I would I would guess until they got numbers, yeah, and, and until the supply chain is full of consoles, this is their best, I would think this is their best bet would be to, to bundle games with it. I think that whenever there's a big game that they want to, you know, pump the numbers up on, and I, I guess I don't know how MPD or these other groups track it, if they, they track games, you know, sold in a bundle as part of the game sales, but, you know, it's a good marketing tactic for Sony if they do count all the God of all the PS5 sold with God of War Ragnarok into the sales of God of War Ragnarok, it definitely makes those look better. It looks better for investors. But, uh, you know, I think whenever there's a big game, they'll bundle it with a PlayStation 5, it would be nice in the future, maybe not until we see a new model of the PlayStation Five. The what that one rumored one we were talking about that had a you know an attachment for it or like had a uh, it was a it was a digital PS Five, but you could also attach a disc drive to it, and that going forward was supposed to be the PlayStation Five model you could buy. You know, once that comes out or if that comes out, I think that you know we might see standalone ones, but I don't know. You know. I think that for now, maybe the bundles are going to be the things. Um, as, well, as, you know, as long as there's a big game to sell them with, you know, you'll probably see a bundle for Spider-Man. You'll see a bundle for Wolverine. Um, but you know, in the meantime, now, you know, you know, I, you never know. Some standalone ones may may sneak out, and you may see them on the store shelves. But um, I think a lot of what you'll see are bundles until a new PlayStation form comes out. Latin Legacy says he's going to wait for the PlayStation 5 refresh. He'd rather have a system that has two terabytes drives right out the box. And then Rick replies, you mean 1,670 gigabytes, you know, because of storage space. You only actually get two terabytes. Uh, one other question I'll ask you, gentlemen, before we move on. Excuse me. Never drink Dr. Pepper during the show because it gives you the burps. Um, now that Sony is selling removable plates... For the PlayStation 5. Do you think we're going to get uh, game-themed consoles or they're just going to sell the PlayStation 5 and sell the plates separate? Because you know you know, gamer plates are coming. You know that's a plan. Mm, well, you, you hope it's the plan, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure that they can market, you know, oh, this PlayStation, instead of, you know, making all these face plates, which I mean, I guess they could make the face plates or the side plates, whatever you want to call them, they could make those arbitrarily rare to kind of make people go out and like, oh, yeah, I got to get this. I got to get this before it sells out. But when they've always loved selling the limited edition consoles, so people would go out and buy them, and, you know, it's just an extra way for them to make cash and draw. You know, even if someone's got a PlayStation 5, you know, if their favorite game comes out with a, a special edition, they may be willing to buy a second one just because and, uh, you know, keep it in the box or play whatever, whatever they want to do with it. But, I mean... 
you'll probably see still see a mix of both. I mean, because how far are we into this generation and the the side plates still aren't like super, you know, you would figure that if they were going to do that, just they would have them out by now, right? Like, oh, side plates to, you know, buy along with your God of War purchase or, you know, Horizon Forbidden West, here's the side plates. Like, if they were going to do individual games, you know, why why aren't they out by now? You know, they did I, all this planning for the PlayStation 5 and they made it so that you could re- t- detach the plates and put new ones on. Why weren't the why aren't these out now? I think because if the if the rumored PlayStation 5 redesign comes with the one with the detachable drive and stuff like that, if you start selling those plates now, there's going to be an outcry going, "Why did you sell us these plates that are not compatible with your new system?" Well, I well but they could if you already have a PlayStation 5 and you buy the plates and they work on your current PlayStation 5, does that argument hold up? Because you can still use them on your current PS5. True. Then why then then I could say why did I get these purple plates for my PS5? I can't use them on the refresh if I buy that one. Uh Matt G brings up a, a interesting point in the chat. He, says he wishes the controllers had interchangeable fit color plates. He would hate to get different console plates and then have mismatched controllers. That's a good point. It is, yeah. I mean, if you're going to buy, you know, specific console face plates for your favorite game, then you would want to have something, uh, a controller, you know, to match that. But also they, they could just sell the controllers, you nice. know, individually. That's true. You, and, you were going to say something. No, I don't think so. Oh, or if I was, my train derailed and I don't remember where I was. All right. Uh, as far as, you know, the consoles now, I'm hoping that the next iteration of the PlayStation 5 or the PlayStation 5 Pro uh, comes with an optical drive in the back. I was really disappointed there was no optical drive in this play- in the PlayStation 5, so I'm not able to use my favorite headset with it without buying an extra dongle, which, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's first world problems at this point. All right. Uh, Athena wanted to say hi, so hi, Athena. You do realize you're going to have to take her out, right? Or you do realize you're going to take that out, right? Why am I going to take it out? She's just saying maybe hi. Maybe the audience doesn't want to hear uh, her barking. Well, it's not that loud. But, yeah, when I edit, I'll see if I'll take it out. All Making right. more work for yourself, man. I'm, I'm trying to keep quiet so you don't got to take me out, too. Uh, you're fine. What, what That's I, your damn opinion. See, what I do with the, the Twitch chat or the Twitch stream is I just bring it over. So there's no edit on that one. So anything I take out of the aud- uh, audio on this end... You know, it's left in the, the YouTube video. Uh, moving on. Next topic we have is also come from IGN. is written by Matt Pertzlow. Sony's video game division has experienced its best financial quarter since launching the PlayStation 5, boosting a huge increase in console sales and first-party software. As revealed in Sony's 2022 third quarter financial results, the PlayStation 5 saw its best sales quarter with 7.1 million consoles sold during the three months ended in December 31st. That puts the console at 12.8 million sold during the 2022 fight. Uh, financial year and 32 million shipped since launch. That's a 34 in- percent increase year on year. A figure that demonstrates the supply issues that once played the console may well and truly be behind us. Uh, PlayStation 5 success has seen Sony increase its annual sales target from 18 to 19 million. Sales revenue for the game and network services segment of Sony clocked in at. Uh, 1,246.5 yen billion. I don't know if I said that right, which is a 53% year on year increase. And while operating profit came in at 116 billion yen, it's a 25% year on year increase. This makes not just for the best quarter of the year, but the best quarter results of the PlayStation 5's entire lifespan. Uh, the article goes on, but it's just more numbers. So it, does seem like the uh, supply chain has uh, alleviating has helped Sony sell more consoles. We kind of saw that coming. I mean, that's more of a dull moment. Uh, well, I mean, it's not only, you know, as time goes on, it's been easier for Sony to get more PlayStation 5s out there, but also holiday season. You know, I talked about the last part of the year and also God of War released, God of War Ragnarok. So that is one of the biggest games Sony could have put out on this console generation, they got out, and it's probably a mishmash of all those reasons is that, you know, huge game, 
you know, big time of the year for gift giving and the fact that the console is more available now. So it's if Sony can, can truly get past the hump of of the supply shortage, they, you know, the PlayStation 5 will do very well. Do you want to say anything? No, I would just say, I mean, now that supplies are starting to not be an issue, of course, they're going to sell more. Well, uh, Alex, you kind of led into our next topic, which is come, also come from IGN, written by Adam Bankers. I, I got that foresight. <laughs> Sony Santa Monica has confirmed that God of War Ragnarok has sold through 11 million copies. The developer behind the latest God of War shared the news on Twitter with an adorably funny gif of Kratos making a heart with his hands. Uh, quote, we are incredibly humbled that God of War Ragnarok has officially sold through 11 million copies. None of this would be possible without the support of our fans, so thank you coming on, for coming on this journey with us. End quote. Uh, in 2022, Sony shared that 2018's God of War has sold more than 23 million copies through September 30th of last year. It's important to note that those sales include the PC release of God of War, so expect a big boost to come when God of War Ragnarok finally makes its way to PC. While God of War Ragnarok has yet to reach the heights of 23 million copies sold, it did become the fastest selling first party game in PlayStation history, with 5.1 million copies sold during its debut week. So, an uh, incredibly popular, incredibly successful game. Let's hope that uh, Square Enix doesn't say this was a failure. I'm sure they will. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, Alex. No, I mean it's. I mean it was off to a hot start, and I'm sure that Sony hopes that that uh, the tail for the the sales of that game continue on because you you know you see that the first week was like five million, then they've basically essentially done a little bit more than double that since then. It's like oh okay, you know. So you had that big spike of everybody who wanted to go out and get it right away, and now you it's kind of it's tailed off a little bit as you would expect. Um, but obviously, you know, get, with with games like uh, I can't remember how much the first one originally sold, but you could see this one, you know, topping out at probably over twenty million by the time it's all said and done. But when it goes on sale more often, or you know, as, when the PC version comes out as well, you can easily see this top in twenty million. All right. Next thing we have is also coming from IGN, written by Matt Perslow. A new PlayStation Five system software beta has. Added Discord voice chat and variable refresh rate support for 10, uh, 1440p displays, among other upgrades. Announced on the PlayStation blog, the new system software is available for beta participants in the U.S., Canada, Japan, U.K., Germany, and France. Its main feature is the addition of Discord voice chat, which allows cross-platform calls through the popular Discord system. Users will need to link their Discord and PlayStation Network accounts to use the service and then begin a call on Discord mobile app before transferring it to their console. It seems a little bit more uh, it seems a little more fitty than a standard PlayStation Network party, but it will no doubt be very welcome to those who frequently play with friends who are on Xbox and PC. The other headline of the feature is the beta update, which is available for refresh rate. Uh, this allows smoother visual performance when used in a VR compatible HDMI 2.1 display, providing the game supports variable refresh rate. VRR can be enabled from your screen and video settings. The new beta also provides a variety of small user experience focus upgrades. These include the ability to share your screen directly from a friend's profile co card. Uh, who, a friend's who play title that shows up on your friend's list that also plays the game you're looking at. A new manual upload function for sending gameplay uh, captures to the PlayStation app, PSVR and PSVR 2 filters for the game library, a new PlayStation of PlayStation 5 data transfer function available over Wi-Fi or LAN, and a notification pop-up for the PlayStation 4 game that alerts you to any PlayStation 4 game save data that you have in the cloud. There's also a limited US and UK release for the video capture voice commands. This allows players to say, hey, PlayStation, capture that to save a video clip of gameplay. Uh, it's the Xbox Connect days all over again. Now, I read that entire article, so please go give it a click. Uh, I know n I know, neither one of you guys are really going to be too happy with any of this or be too impressed with any of this, but I have to say, I did try linking the Discord to the PlayStation Network. It's a little clunky, and I haven't yet to try it out to see how it really works. But for somebody that streams, this is a welcome addition to me. 
Uh, but before I go into my whole ramblings, I'm going to give you guys a chance to talk, starting with you, Yield. I mean, I guess if you play with uh, friends on a different console, that's pretty cool. Other than that, I could really care less because I just use the PlayStation party chat and off off I go. All right. Uh, Alex, you have anything? Yeah, I mean, I, I do use Discord for a few things here and there, but not much, really. And I don't know. I guess the big problem I've had with Discord is it's never been made essential to my gaming experience. Like, I've gotten along fine without it. Or, you know, using it essentially just for Pokemon Go, um, to for raid invites and stuff like that, or to communicate with other players. But when it comes to PlayStation, that's, it's, you know, Discord's not essential. It's never been made essential. And so for me, like, Tricky, does this, you know, I, str- I have streamed. I don't stream. You know, it's been a while since I streamed. But, you know, I would like to get more into that and, and do a little bit more often. But does this make Discord essential to being a PlayStation owner, really? No. I See, okay. The way this is going to work for me is, I you know, I just mentioned how the new PlayStation 5 doesn't have the optical output on the system um, and doesn't allow me to use my my, uh, my favorite he- headset. So, the, okay, the way the headset works is because of the optical drive, I'm able, as a streamer, I'm able to have all audio go to my headset. So I can hear the game and I can hear the chat in the headset. With the optical cable, the sound also comes out through the TV, which then essentially, uh, by default, runs through the HDMI. So as I'm using video capture uh, on the PlayStation or on the on the computer, I'm able to have the 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 party chat. And the game come through my headset, but it's also coming through the TV, which allows that sound to also go to the stream. When you take the optical out, if you're using any, I want to say official headset, because there are some third-party or generic or uh, off-brand headsets that allow it. But I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, um, but when we do Rocket League Thursdays, if, if you have a headset on, and you're talking through the chat, or you, you, you're talking through a party chat, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's no sound coming out of your TV. Not the game, not the thing. So as a streamer, if that happens, the stream is getting no sound whatsoever other than me talking into a microphone. Now, it's different when you stream from the console because the you know the console is, is sending all that audio straight through the console, but if you stream with a PC like I do, you get none of that sound. So, with Discord, um, what I can do now is there's a Discord overlay. So, as the sound is coming through the headset, I'm able to have the Discord in a third-party way also go to the stream. Did I just confuse the hell out of you two? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh wait, was I supposed to be listening still? You, you asked. I, I, I don't mean I don't mean to be rude, but like when things get like a little more on the technical side of video games, I kind of like, huh? Okay, my kind of ba- glossy, and you know, I'm like, Ugh. okay, basically, basically you, like this. You need to you need to dumb it down for the morons in the room. Okay, I, I, I'll put it this way: when you guys do when you when we used to do Rocket League Thursdays and everybody was streaming, you guys were all on a headset, and you guys were all streaming through your console. Yes. Okay. When you do it that way, all the audio is getting streamed to the uh, to Twitch and to your headset. When I was doing Rocket League Thursdays, because I streamed from the PC, all the audio was going to my headset, and nothing was coming out of the PlayStation into my capture card. So essentially, while you guys were streaming, you had all sound, everything. I had no sound unless I set it up that way. So when I was streaming, your voices and the gameplay was coming through my TV rather than the headset. So I was able to talk to you through the headset, but all sound was coming through my TV. So I always had to play with one ear off 
so I could hear you guys talking and the gameplay and the, the game sounds. Hopefully, I didn't confuse you there. No, 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 that, no, that made sense. Okay, It'd be really weird to play that way, but that that right. makes sense. So when I when the reason I said I wanted the optical drive is because through the optical drive, I was able to have the gameplay and the chat come through the optical, which got to my headset. But it also went to the HDMI, which went to which went to my PC and. The stream, without having to use your third-party software, could hear you guys, hear the gameplay, and I could also hear you guys on the headset. So with Discord, there's a third, there's a overlay that I could put a, a, a Discord overlay on the stream as a as a source, so I could have all the audio go into my headset, but they would still hear you through the Discord overlay on the third party for Twitch. I know that gets a little technical, and that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to you, but this helps a streamers that stream on consoles because now, if I, like, but see, because now I can have the Discord chat. But what I don't know is if I start a Discord for the stream, if you guys can join that chat on the PSN. So I, don't so, I mean, I think I think when it comes to streaming, a lot of people just default to Twitch because it's been, it's it's the biggest platform and it's been around for such a long time and it's relatively easy to get hooked into. I mean, granted, you know, Tricky still had me had to help me set had to help me when setting everything up, and I think he did most of the work. But I mean, what's the better way to stream as a gamer on the PlayStation Five? Is it using something like Discord or is it Twitch? Okay, well, you're asking the wrong question. Okay, well then. What's the question I should be asking? Okay. You guys, when you stream first day from the PlayStation 5, it's very limited in what you could do. Because all you're streaming is your gameplay and your audio, your headset audio, your microphone, whatever that, that may be. When I stream from a PC, if you guys went to Twitch right now and saw everything that I have set up, that's only possible through streaming through a PC. So, like, I have your, your trophy cards up. I have the Extra Life logo. I, you know, I have a cover image for We Are Here Forever for Yield. I have a Dead Space cover image for you. Um, I have the Trophy Wars logo. I have the, you know, uh, a, a, a rotating thing that shows all our social media. You cannot do that from a console. So, it's it. the question is not, do you stream from the con the console or Twitch? It's, do you stream from the console or use a third-party software like OBS or XSplit or something like that that's able to stream from. But in order to do that, you obviously you need a, a good PC and you need a capture card. Streaming from the console, you need none of that. You just hit the share button and you're live on Twitch. But it's very limited. So if somebody came in to watch your stream, you know, all they're going to see is your gameplay. And if you had a PlayStation camera, they could see your face and they hear your voice. But they don't see any of the social medias. They don't see... You know any uh, follow announcements and stuff like that. So it's it's different. Me personally, I think streaming from a PC is better because of the options available. But streaming from a, a console is just as fine as well. But for people that stream through a PC, this Discord helps with communication. So I, you know, the, it doesn't matter what headset I'm using. Everybody could hear the party chat because I could see it. one of the other, one of the other things I could do is say I'm doing a raid on Division Two. I can set it up where the stream hears the gameplay, but they don't hear the chat. This allows the game the 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 stream to hear the chat because if I'm doing a raid and I'm communicating with people saying, "Hey, we have to do this," or "You have to knock that guy out," or the, you know, we have. You know, uh, runners coming from the shotgun is coming from this direction. You guys don't hear any of the other seven people in my party. You only hear me because I have a microphone attached to XSplit. Where you, so you don't hear the com the conversation. So it takes an aspect of watching the raid out of it because you're not hearing the communication. You're not hearing the callouts and stuff like that. This Discord integration now helps with that. Because now I could use the Discord overlay and put it into Exploit, and now you can hear everybody. 
But like I said, I don't know if this works. Like if somebody's streaming from the piece, or if, if somebody's playing on the PlayStation Network, I don't know if they can just join that chat. I think they have to be in Discord. I know that's a lot of technical stuff for you guys, but as a streamer, this makes me happy. Now we just have to, you know, get it to work. Well, and that you really, when Sony's looking to improve the PlayStation Five experience, like looking for ways for those people who are more, you know, technically sound or you know, technically advanced, and look for you know the opportunities. Because I mean, streaming is obviously a big, big push for the the console developers, and you know, making things more like a PC. But um, I, I definitely think that then focusing more on the hardcore audience and getting some of these features out that will make stuff like streaming a lot better is um, where you know where Sony should be, you know, putting a lot of its work in. And figuring out how to make the better the experience better for those people, because you know, for people who just kind of turn on their PlayStation Five and just play games at home, I mean, you know, yeah, they can always improve things, but you know, there's there's more that can be done for the people that use the uh, the PlayStation Five as like just one piece of their uh, you know entertainment experience or how they connect with the world. Uh, if that makes sense. Here, here's another thing coming from the Twitch chat. Uh, I'm going to start playing Elden Ring, but I was, you know, as you guys heard on last week's show, I'm struggling a little bit. So I'm essentially like recruiting Matt G to be my Elden Ring tutor. Uh, this now helps because now he can join Discord without having to turn on his PlayStation and be able to talk to me in real time as I'm doing things while he's watching the stream. He doesn't have to turn on his PlayStation to talk to me. Uh, so that's going to help. Uh, the other thing he says, uh, Discord is great for streaming directly to your friends in Discord. Streaming to Twitch is for a wider audience. Yes, that's true. And Matt, you may have to correct me, but I think you can only stream to Discord from your PC. I don't think you could do a console stream to Discord. I'm not sure on that. I've never tried. So I, I could stand corrected on that. All right, so we talked about the Discord about this. The, the other stuff, you guys aren't really too hyped on the the uh, uh, variable refresh rate. That doesn't apply to you guys because I don't think you guys have those kind of displays. Um, uh, sending, you know, gameplay capture straight to your PlayStation app. Alex, that's got to appeal to you. Uh, you get, you know, be able to do all your uh, uh, photo modes after you beat a game. Yeah. But, I mean, as is now, like, not even, you know, I mean, photo mode was fine before. Like, how how really, how would that make it better? Uh, let me read how it says. It says you get the manual upload function for sending uh, certain gameplay features straight to the PlayStation app. Uh, I, I think, because right now the PlayStation app, I think it automatically sends it. Like, it's auto... An, it only an automatic uh, upload, so everything that you PlayStation captures uh, automatically gets sent to the app. I think now it's saying you don't have to send them all there. You can only send the, you can set you know turn that to manual, and you can only send the ones you want to. Because I think also with the PlayStation, I think after I send this to the app, it's like it deletes itself after fourteen days. It does, yeah. Well, yeah, two weeks, and well, personally, like I. You know, I just like to have everything auto uploaded. That way, I can go through the pictures later. So, I mean, I would maybe not use the manual aspect of it, but I mean, well, may, also maybe the manual is after the fourteen. Say after fourteen days, if you still want it to do, you can go in and get that picture and manually send it. Rather, because I don't think you can manually send the pictures now. So, I think I think this more applies to after the fourteen days. If you still somehow wanted that picture, you could say, okay, now send it over there. So, it, you know, it's not lost after 14 days. I, I could be wrong, but that's the way I'm reading it. Yeah, and, and that would definitely would be nice because I think when we were playing uh, It Takes Two, I lost a few pictures because of that because I just didn't think to check. But uh, usually I'm good about checking within the time, but, you know, sometimes you get to play in a game, and let's be real, two two weeks can pass real quickly these days. Yes, it can. It seems like it does. And, you know, so the, the longer you can have them there, you know, I don't necessarily – it's nice when they disappear after a certain amount of time so you don't have to go through and delete them. So and, and obviously that, you know, makes sure that Sony doesn't have to warehouse those photos for the rest of the, you know, of eternity. But, you know, maybe maybe a little longer than two weeks would be nice. But, yeah, I mean, there's definitely I definitely want them to disappear after a certain amount of time. But, you know, if I the more time that I have, it's you know, that would be nice as well. All right. Uh, Yo, do you have any final comments? Yeah. 
Or did I just confuse the hell out of you with all that technical talk? I, I, I got the gist of it. All right. All right. So at this point, we're going to put in Garrett's uh, trophy rarity update. Uh, I, I Fair warn, it's 28 minutes long. So just in, uh, sit back, enjoy. Gareth goes in on a bunch of people, including myself. He roasts a lot of people for their their trophies. So sit back and enjoy that, and we'll be back in 28 minutes. Okay, so the listener, for everybody watching on Twitch and YouTube right now, this this was before. So all this is going to be cut out of the audio vision version, so this seems a little wonky. That's why. All right, we're back. All right, so uh, at this point, thank you, Gareth, for all those roasts. Um, my buns are certainly on fire from you roasted me. And it's time for the old adage to go to our social media. Time to check my social media, yeah. All right, our first question comes from Matt G. He says, a necromorph just spawned in your room. You only have access to the item right next to you. Are you surviving? Yield, are no. you surviving? No. Can nice you tell it, everybody? Can, can you tell us what's near you that would not save your life? Everything. <laughs> Yield's voice is went down a little. He's looking around the room right now. <laughs> I am. I mean, I could probably get a stapler. But that's not going to do much. Th- throw a computer at them. That's about it. I mean, maybe I could shatter the mirror and try and stab them. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not making it out, folks. Alex, what about you? Well, I would hazard a guess that most people that uh, of the community would not make it out if a necromorph was coming at them. And, and obviously there are different variations of necromorphs. So like there are brutes and other ones that get more difficult to take down. So I was getting too technical. I'm assuming we're just talking about a standard necromorph. I would assume that most of us are not making out of that situation because, you know, you'd have to have some pretty duty, pretty heavy duty stuff to dismember them, to get them to a point where you could kill them. Oh, okay. You but are you surviving is the question. I am explaining. <laughs> A handgun's not going to get it done. So if you got a handgun, you think you're going to take down a necromorph, well, sorry, that's not going to happen. So, uh, no, I'm not surviving because I have a baseball bat in my room, and that's about it. I'm not even sure, given anything in the house, I mean, because we don't own guns. So given anything in the house, I don't know if I could survive. I would basically just have to pick up the computer chair, throw it at the necromorph, and hope it is, you know, dazed or, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh its attention has taken long enough that I could run th- run by it and run out the house because that's the only way I'm surviving is if I can get around it to get out the house. I can't kill one. All right. Am I surviving? I don't know. I mean, I do have a sword behind me that's pretty sharp. Um, I don't know. A necromorph is something from Dead Space, right? Well, yeah. Okay, and and you got, you got to take you you know you got to even shoot you, him in the head doesn't kill him. You got to take off the limbs. So I could, I, I could probably survive if I could get off the limbs with the sword, right? Yeah, but they also have like large like their arms have become like these giant like daggers essentially. They have like swords on their arms, and so they have essentially swords too. So you got to be you got to be quick, tricky if you're going to get this done. But but and, I stand a fighting chance is my point. You stand a better of a of a fighting chance than someone's got like an a, a container of Elmer's glue, yeah. But <laughs> when it comes to killing a necromorph, I don't necessarily know that that sword is going to get you any further. Than that. But you may you may last longer, but you also are probably going to end up dead. All right, uh, Nitro says absolutely not, and Rick says, mate, I've got a fucking contact beam next to me. I'm still dead. Is contact beam something from Dead Space? The contact beam, yes, is a gun from Dead Space. But it, wait, does he have a replica? Find out. Rick, <laughs> do you have a replica contact beam? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, Rick is no longer in the chat. Oh, shit. The Necromorphs are coming for Rick. <laughs> <laughs> he has left the chat. Well, I mean... To maybe, be- maybe he was actually sending out the, <laughs> a, dis- a distress call there. He was letting us know that there was one in the room, and he had to go. To, to be fair, Rick said he was always sticking around for the Garrett's update on the stream, and they was taking off. He stuck around for quite a while. Uh, cause he said he had an early morning. All right. We're going to have to find out on Wednesday when, uh, Rick hears this. Uh, yeah, okay. hopefully you're okay, Rick. Hopefully we hear from you, you know, 
tomorrow. All right. The next question is coming from Rick. I kind of addressed this earlier in the show, but he says, since Tricky went all last year without spam, is this year's challenge to not earn a trophy below common rarity? Um, some, some, somebody bet him some money uh, for extra life. You could just want to hold me down. Because <laughs> you know I'll do it. Yeah, I know you. That's why I said that. I'll, I'll, I'll just stop just gaming. Spam- <laughs> yeah, or, exactly. or just spam the rest of the year. <laughs> you'll just spam the rest of the year is what you'll do. Uh, well, that would that would make sense. Last year, he couldn't spam at all, and to make a whole run at spam this year, to, to, to eat nothing but spams, Tricky would be eating good this year for hey, uh, in the Platinum Trophy category. Just give me pineapple. I'll be good with my spam. Uh, okay, well, he did change the question, so because uh, I said I already did because uh, I got the trophy, got a war, and then he updated the question. Uh, so he kind of changed the rules of the questions at the same time. So, all right. So that is our questions. We don't have any more. So we're going to move on to our topic of the week. Mm-hmm. Now, we did this kind of debate thing on episode uh, 550. I don't know how long this is going to take. We're going to try not to make this too long. But IGN posted an article of the best-selling video game consoles of all time. Uh, and there is 28 of them. So we're going to go through them, and if you want to talk about a particular console, we can talk about it. If not, we can just move on. Uh, number 28 is Sega Dreamcast at 9.13 million. Oh, man, that is sad. The, the, the Dreamcast is at the bottom of the of the bin because it's, you know, it is a great console. I still have mine. It's still in working condition. I, I love the Dreamcast, but... You know, you win Sega, you know, after the Saturn and the Dreamcast, you now see why Sega got out of the console business and decided to just make games, make software. Uh, it was originally released on November 27th, 1998. That was the same year I graduated high school. Showing your age. <laughs> I am yeah. showing my age. Uh, wait, wait. You graduated in 98? Yes. I thought we were closer in age. I didn't go into high school until 99. <laughs> How old wow, are you now? Wow! Wow! You're younger, way younger than me. <laughs> I I st- I started high school in '94. Damn! I was in fourth grade. Oh God! You make me feel old. You old? How old are I you? Wanted, I'm pretty I, sure I, I'm not the only thing that makes you feel old. You old? You graduated what? '97. Yeah, '97. Yeah, so you old a year before me. Oh, you want to talk shit about how you know you always point out that yields the oldest, but. There ain't that much your soup. Yeah, that much room separating y'all. Hey, it don't no matter how old I get, you'll always be older. And a lot more wiser. Well, we we're not gonna go there. Number twenty seven. Because tricky tricky doesn't want to lose that on that hill too. Number twenty seven at a sales of nine point two six million. And it was originally released on November twenty second, nineteen ninety four, the Sega Saturn. Man, <laughs> it's almost Sega, like at a premonition. Sega holding down the anchor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, you guys didn't bring up this link, right? I, I'm going through it right now. No, no, no! In. Don't, don't, don't go, don't go through because I, I want you guys to be surprised. Okay, uh, I don't have it up at 26 at 13.56 uh, million. That was released on November 18th, 2012. Alex, you have a guess of which it is. The Wii, the Wii U, correct. Yeah, now I mean, we all we knew that the Wii U was going to be towards the bottom because people who played the Wii U, they're like, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I like some of the games on there. They've even brought a lot of the games over the Switch, like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. So there was some fun stuff to play on there. The problem was that everyone saw it as like a mid console. It was like not, you know, in between the Wii and the Switch, it wasn't like it didn't feel like a full new generation in a way that you going from the PlayStation Four to the PlayStation Five would be. So. Uh, it was kind of seen as an in-between console, I think, by a lot of people, and it just really never gained a lot of traction because of that. Well, it, uh, one credit it does have it to its name is it had one of the Game of the Years, Zelda Breath yeah, of the Wild. But, yeah, but that was for both consoles. So while you can dump it there... Eh. <laughs> yeah, it, se- it seemed like the Wii U was an answer to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox... Um, 
one rather than being what would come you know to battle the xbox the xbox well, series x and s and the playstation 5 it, it seemed like a, a it, console that was trying to catch them up to consoles that had already been released see but the thing about the wii u i think a lot of people overlook is the wii u was essentially the switch with the tablet just broken into three sections yes i mean i mean instead of having the actual uh, the actual box console you just have a t- you have the Wii U tablet in your hand as a switch correct you keep, when you can't take it apart so yeah right so all right number 25 at 13.9 million was originally released on October 6 1990 you guys have a retro of a guess now i am going to spoil something here and make it a little easier for you guys to guess this list is also listen listing uh, handhelds as part of consoles. The, the Game Boy. Close. Uh, Yield? No, I don't have a guess because I'm I, I'm looking at it. Okay. Oh, well, oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Um, G- Game Boy's way higher, Alex. I kind of scrolled through and I know it's way higher. <laughs> the Game Gear? Sega it, Game Gear? There you go. There he goes. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I didn't... I was trying to figure out when in relation to the other Sega consoles that was released because... I didn't know. I knew it was released earlier, but I didn't know it was obviously released in the '90s because I would, you know, l- lug it around with me on my like when we go on family trips and like on the train. Like I always had the Game Gear with me. Eight through battery is like crazy, um, but it was. I mean, it was a fun hell of a console to play on. Obviously, it had color, which the uh, the Game Boy didn't. But yeah, I just didn't. I had. I didn't know it was released that early. All right, yield. How far down the list did you go? I mean, I scroll through it all. I don't have it memorized, but I scroll through it all. All right, because I'm I'm not asking you to guess anymore. No, don't ask me to guess. Alex, number twenty four at fourteen million sold. Originally released on December seventeenth, twenty eleven. Do you have a guess? Twenty eleven. If you want a clue, I'll give you one clue. The the original PSP. No. You're in the right family. The Vita? Yes. There you go. All right. 14 million sold. I thought it sold a lot better. Than I thought it would be higher as well myself. <laughs> I didn't look at this list, so I'm going. I'm being surprised as the list as goes on, too. All right. Number 23. At 17 million sold. This is kind of an easy one for you, Alex. Originally released November 10th, 2020. It was the PlayStation 5? No. no. Wait, what? Hold on, wait. Say that again. Originally released November 10th, 2020 at 17 million sold. Is it the Xbox Series X? X slash S, yes. Okay. All right, moving on. Which, Sorry, which you, that, pro- you probably said... Kinda- you probably said the PlayStation Five sales earlier, and I, I just, did. Just, just, <laughs> I, I did. Like, that's why. I, that's why I said this is probably an easy one for you, Alex. Th- this kind of makes sense, and I'm not necessarily taking a shot at X- Microsoft Xbox. They just haven't got their games situated yet. That that's a fair point. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, heck, uh, I saw the other day how Blade Two has been delayed. They, like, like they don't even know what's going on with it delayed. All I mean, right. Let's let's be honest. I mean, Game Pass is a tremendous service, but what's keeping that like as good of a service as it is is they're relying on third party games. Is what they're essentially doing. Yes. All right. Number twenty two at twenty million sold, and was originally released on October twentieth, nineteen eighty five. The um, how many? How many was it? Twenty million sold. In nineteen eighty five, uh, the. With the NES? Nope. Do yeah. you want a clue? Sure. Some notable games that were released on this system were Fantasy Star, Alex Kidd in America World, and oh, Sonic the, the, the Hedgehog. Snake Drive? Nope. Right Family. It's not the Mega Drive? Nope. No. Think before the Mega Drive. I can't. The Sega no. Master System Mark Three. No. All right. All right. Swing and a miss. Number 21, also selling 21 million copies, was originally released on November 15th, 2001. How many many million copies? 21 million. 
and not copies, but consoles. Um, I'll give you a clue if you want it. Yeah. Highest rated games on the system were Grand Theft Auto Double Pack, which included GTA 3 and Vice City. And well, if I give you those two, you're definitely going to know it. All right. I, I said Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2. Oh, the original Xbox? Yes. Yeah. I didn't. Which, which, I, I was gonna. I was gonna think that, but it was either that or the GameCube in my head. But I thought that the Xbox came out before then. Which I that seems a little low too. For the original that Xbox. Was, yeah, doesn't it? No, that seemed about right. Because for a con a console that didn't never really sold well in Japan. That and they it was their first console on the market before they really got into the game. That sounds about right. No, oh, okay. I was gonna say that, that. I thought the Xbox did better than that. All right, number 20, 21.74 million sold and was originally released on September 14th, 2001. Is that the GameCube? That is the GameCube. All right, number 19. Oh, this, Alex, if you don't get this one, I'm going to be really upset with you. 30 million sold and was really originally released on September 11th, 1977. The Atari? The, ta- which Atari? The, I don't know. 2600. 2600, okay. I'll give it to you. I'm not mad at you. Number 18 at 32.1 million sold and was released November 12th, 2020. Number, oh, the PlayStation 5. There you go. Number 17 at 32.93 million sold was originally released on June 23rd, 1996. The PS1? I I bought this on launch. Nope. The Nintendo 64. There you go. There you go. All right. Number 16 at 35 million originally released on October 29th, 1988. Game Boy? Nope. I'm really surprised that Genesis? that out, yes, that that outsold the 64. The Genesis outsold the 64. Yeah, I mean there was that big that whole big like Nintendo versus Genesis thing fueling that, and I don't know with the whole move from PlayStation, you know, using discs and Nintendo still using the cartridges. Granted, I am surprised that uh, the 64 was that low because I had that console. It was great, but it was a great console. I mean, especially coming off the SNES, but I mean that's kind of like. It makes more sense now that, you know, Nintendo kind of started as... Well, I guess they didn't really change the strategy with the GameCube. They had the mini disc, but, I mean, it did. It, it surprised me, but it also doesn't surprise me. Because I guess people... That was an age where people, you know, who had been gaming when they were younger, like on the Atari 2600 or something like that, they had, or they, on the original NES, you know, they were growing up a little bit, and maybe they just wanted something a little bit more mature than Nintendo. All right, moving on. Number 15... At 49.1 million sold, was originally released on November 21st, 1990. Uh, the Super Nintendo. Correct. That should be high on the list because that's one of my favorite game consoles of all time. I love the Super Nintendo. Again, Actually, I forgot to tell this, but on uh, I went on eBay recently and bought uh, a game that I never knew. So here at one of our local barcades, we have the arcade cabinet for Sunset Riders. And I always thought it was a exclusive to the Genesis. It was not, because it was also on the Super Nintendo. So I went and bought myself a copy of Sunset Riders for the Super Nintendo with a custom custom case as well. I paid probably Ooh. too much for it, but I did get it. All right. Number 14. At 50 million sold, estimated. Its original release date was November 22nd, 2013. And the reason I say estimated is because the company stopped reporting sales as of October 2015. Give me a hint. Uh, some games that were released on it were Grand Theft Auto V, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. The Xbox One? Correct. All right, number 13. Again, Yield, I, I'm not trying to exclude you out of this, but if you want to talk about any particular console, please just jump in. No, no, that's fine. Uh, from here on out, if he wants to guess... Well, he then, can't guess because he looked at the list already. Well, I know, but he said he doesn't remember everything. 
Number no, that's fine. Alex is way better at this than I am. <laughs> well, it's funny because like, I was trying to remember years. Like, the years is obviously the biggest hint you can get besides, you know, having games. But some of the things, like, are obviously released in different you know, regions at different times. So, like, with the, with the PlayStation, it was released in Japan before it came to North America. So I'm trying to think, like, well, wait a minute. Is this yeah, was uh, this the year that it came out or was this? You know? Well, to be fair, a lot of these say the, the initial release date was Japan's date. So uh, yeah, I, I didn't say that. Then, so, yeah. I didn't state that, but yes, you're. That's also a factor. Uh, number thirteen at sixty one point nine one million sold, and it was released on July fifteenth, nineteen eighty three. Is it another Atari? Is it another Atari? No. It's not the Nintendo, is it? Yes. The original it Nintendo. Is? Yeah, the original NES. Which did when not come... The big crash happened because of E.T. and all the shovelware that they were throwing out on the Atari systems. But it also did not come to the United States for two, another two years after that. Okay, because, well, Super Mario Brothers would save the industry, and I'm just trying to think, because, like, Super Mario Brothers didn't come out to like... Or 80, it didn't get here until, like, 85. Yeah, yeah, 85. All right, number 12 at 75.94 million, and was released on February 26, 2011. How many again? Seventy five point nine four million. Is that the Xbox three sixty? Nope. PSP? Nope. PS three? Nope. I don't know then you're gonna have to give me a hint. One of the games released, because I can't give give it the other two, are Fire Emblem Awakening. Oh, well, it's obviously, is it the 3DS? Correct. Oh, okay. Number 11 at nine, oh, sorry, 81.51 million and was released March 21st, 2001. Okay, so March 21st, 2001. We've already done the GameCube. We've already talked about the, the original Xbox. The PS2 was higher than that, wasn't it? The PS2 is like the greatest go- selling console of all time, isn't it? I think that's number one. That should be number one. Um, I'm just letting you talk. I'm not answering you. Because <laughs> you, talk- you seem to be talking it out, so. Yeah, 2001, though. What else would have come out around then? The Dreamcast was around there, but obviously it was it was before then. Sony didn't have any handhelds out then. Nintendo would have, but I don't know if Nintendo would have gotten that high with a handheld. If the three, because 3DS would have been so better. I don't know. Give me a hand. One of the games released on it was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two. Is it the PlayStation Two? No. No. Two thousand one. I don't know then. Okay, I could give you a hint, but I'm going to tell you right now, this hint is not going to be the obvious answer. Another game released on it was Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Well, that was originally l- released on the SNES. Um, I don't know. All right. Well, you want one more hit? Or you want me to just tell you? Just tell me. Game Boy Advance. Game Boy, okay. It, I figured it had to be a handheld, but yeah. But see, that, that I am really surprised that that outsold the 3DS. Yes, that that is a yeah. very good point. I I, yeah. I I figured I figured the 3DS was like the best handheld ever, so selling wise, because like everyone's got a 3DS. Well, and and one of the things I didn't mention earlier, but you look at where the Genesis is or the uh, where the NES is compared to the SNES. The SNES was a better console. But when you throw the Genesis in there, you start to see how that competition eats away at your sales numbers. All right. Number 10 at 82 million sold. Um, and the it was released on December 12th, 2004. December 12th, 2004. Mm. I'm not sure. 
one of the games released on it was Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. The PSP? Yes. I could see. I was going to say the PSP, but it seemed way too early for the PSP. PSP is almost 20 years old. <laughs> yes. Um. All right. Never died at 85 million sold. Again, estimate was released on November 22nd, 2005. Two thousand five. The PS3? Nope. No. Close. Xbox three hundred and sixty. There you go. All right. The Red Rain of Death. I knew. I had known. <laughs> that was going to be my clue if he asked for one. <laughs> I was going to say something about you have to wrap a towel around the console. See, I, I remember that the PSP and the Xbox 360 were around the same sales because I had looked at it before. And that's the thing is people like to make fun of the PSP, but it almost outsold the, the Microsoft's best-selling video game console. So if you're making fun of the PSP, you're also making fun of Microsoft. Number eight at 87.5 million sold. Again, estimate. It was released on November 11th, 2006. PS3? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, some of these are going to become more obvious because the, we're in the top 10 now. But number seven at 101.63 million sold and was released November 19th, 2006. The Wii? Correct. Number yeah, we still hey, Wait, have we said the Switch yet? No. no. N- number six. At 102.4 million sold, was released December 3rd, 1994. Wait, how many sold? 102.4 million. PS1? Correct. Number 5, at 114.33 million sold, and was released March 3rd, 2017. The Switch. Correct. Number four at 117.2 million and was released November 15th, 2013. The PS4. Correct. Number three at 118.69 million sold and was released April 21st, 1989. The Game Boy? Correct. Number two at a hundred Damn, he's good. <laughs> at a hundred and fifty four a hundred and fifty four point zero two million and was released November twenty first, two thousand four. Is it the PS two? No. Okay, I figured it was the best selling console of all time. Um, <laughs> the 2DS? Yeah. Uh, was that? No, that it, wasn't the 2DS. There, was the there a Nintendo 2DS? DS? Nintendo it, DS? It is the. Was there a 2DS? Yes, there. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, it is the DS. The 2DS was the 3DS that didn't fold. Oh, okay. And number one, which we already know, it's 159 million sold, and it was released March 4th, 2000. The PS2. Correct. I figured that was number one. I should have gone with my instincts, but I couldn't think what would... I was trying to think of home consoles, and I was like, wait a minute. And I was like, Nintendo's probably got another sneaky handheld portable console in there, so... (laughs) So, overall, Yield, since uh, I was quizzing Alex the whole time... What's your overall thoughts on this list? Like, does any of these surprise you other than the ones you've mentioned already? Uh, I didn't think the Game Boy was that popular back in the day. I mean, I knew that it was a big thing, but I didn't think... I thought that the 3DS would be the top amongst handhelds. That's really about it. Everything else feels like it falls in roughly about right. All right, Alex, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I wish the Dreamcast and the Sega Saturn didn't, you know, bring up the rear, but, I mean, I guess somebody has to. It's surprising that Nintendo 64 didn't sell better. 
Um, I'm sure a lot of people will be surprised that the PSP sold that much, given how like it's kind of generally accepted that those didn't weren't super successful for Sony. But PSP, you know, was really successful in Japan. Um, so I mean, people probably may not have guessed that it sold that much. You know, I will still say. Yes, I will give Microsoft credit for being forward-looking and getting stuff like their online infrastructure there before Sony had it, making multiplayer gaming online far more fun and better of a better experience than Sony ever tried to do in the past. And you know, having Game Pass ready to go and cloud streaming and all that kind of stuff, you know, they they have been a front runner of that and they've been great at that. You, no doubt, it was partly for, for you know front uh, forward-looking, but at the same time, you look at the sales of their consoles and. I have no doubt in my mind that part of the reason they decided to push for this as early as they have is partially because they know that they can't compete with Sony and Nintendo when it comes to the console space. They cannot sell as many consoles as them. So, like, you know what? Consoles can still be an important thing to us, but we're going to work on the stuff that Sony and Microsoft are not looking at to get us ahead in that part of the race. So, yeah, part forward-looking and part of it is they see that their hardware, their boxes at the stores don't do as well. So, and that plays out here with where their consoles all land. Sony just does much better with that. Um, but yeah, nothing else really surprising. Uh, most of the things you would figure, you know, people might have forgotten how well some of the handheld consoles sold, but, you know, everything else kind of falls where it should. All right. Uh, last thing I'll say about this is uh, one of the, la- the last line of this article. Uh, Sony, uh, through all their consoles, has sold 1.5 billion different units. Hail to the king. That is insane. It's also worth noting, as we said on the show before, uh, PlayStation uh, holds, I think it's six of the top ten spots. I mean, yes, this is all important, but this is also, you know, very historical. And now, you know, Sony can't just rest on that. They have to transform themselves a bit and do more of what Microsoft is doing. And, you know, obviously the box components like the, the the console box is still going to be important to their strategy but you know transforming their company and focusing more on the online stuff more of the cloud stuff is where what they need to do to you know Im, you know continue to improve their business because they can't just rest on these numbers and be like oh you know we're the king we'll always be the king no you're going to have to adapt for the times as well uh, uh correction they hold five of the top 10 spots all right so before we wrap up the show and move on to our shout outs yield i'll ask you first do you think the playstation 5 reaches top 10, top five, all-time sales? Uh, My initial gut reaction is no. It it really depends on the games. If Sony can keep pumping out one-of-a-kind, you know, gotta-play exclusive games, then it has a strong chance. And it also depends on how long they're going to support it. I mean, Nintendo is as high as it is because it's even where the NES is as high as it is because it was the only console and it was the only console for years. Uh, the two is as high as it is because it has a really good library and there was a long development cycle from the two to the three. Now we're starting to get into very fast development cycles you know there's already chit chat of the six being you know worked on and so if you don't have the longevity of a long developmental cycle then you're not going to sell or have you're not going to climb in the total sales because there will be people that at about the time they want to upgrade to a five maybe let's say that they're just they're fine where they're at with the four that, oh, we're going to come out with the six. Well, maybe I'll just skip this generation and go with the six. So I just, there's a lot of factors going in, but my initial guess is no. All right, Alex, you, what do you think? So we got to remember that they have lost time because of the pandemic and the, the constraint on manufacturing and the actual components to put into the consoles, they've lost some time on that. So this generation may not fall in the, in, you know, follow the same trajectory as a lot of others have, you know, I think it was Latin legacy who said in the chat, we can expect a refresh because there's almost always a refresh of a Sony console at some point in the console cycle. We saw Nintendo do it with the OLED and Microsoft usually does it as well. Um, so these console manufacturers, they find ways to, 
more efficiently and better make the consoles, you know, make them less expensive, make them more cost effective. So we can expect a refresh at some point, which will give the PlayStation 5 a little extra life. I think that the Switch is going to be the leading selling console of this generation simply because, again, Sony and Microsoft lost out on time because of what we've been going through since 2020. Um, but I think that the real thing is the question is, does it eclipse a hundred million? I think it's going to fall somewhere between 80, between the PS3 and a hundred million mark. I don't know if it can quite get to a hundred million, but that's really going to be the test there. I think it will get past the PS3, but if it can get into the triple digits is really kind of the big question. So I, I don't think it's going to be, what, what was the, what was number 10? What did it sell? Uh, it was the PSP, which sold to 82 million. So right now, currently with our numbers, uh, the PS5 is 50 million behind it. Okay, I think I think it can reach top 10. Yeah, I think it it can do the uh, get past the PSP and and the Xbox 360. Now, now one thing you said, um, which I think is noting, and again, I'm not trying to slander or anything. You said that you think the Switch would be the best selling of this generation. It's worth noting that the Switch has almost a three-year lead in sales because the Switch released in 20, 2017, where both the series and the PS5 both released in 2020. So it is worth maybe, noting that it has a three, almost a three-year lead on them. Well, yeah, and maybe the generations get kind of jumbled when you when you go from the Wii to the Wii U to the Switch, and maybe kind of you know we, it's, it becomes a little messier to delineate where the generations are. But I would say that the Switch fits in better with the Xbox Series X and Xbox S and the PS5 than it does with the previous generation. I think it fits in more nicely if we're, you know, looking at that that way of them all, you know, being um, competitors in the same space as, you know, part of the current generation of Xbox and PlayStation. And again, we don't know when uh, Nintendo is going to come out with a new console. They may come out with a Switch 2. They may sit on a little bit. So they may grow that lead even more. Well, a lot of people... And I don't, you know, I guess this is up for debate. But a lot of people would say that the Switch uh, was in the PS4, Xbox One generation and that Nintendo hasn't released their new console. So, I mean, it, there's an argument to be made each way because the the PS4 and the Xbox One both came out in 2013. Switch came out in 2017. And then you have another three years until uh, Microsoft and Sony released their consoles. A lot of people feel like the Switch was the, in that generation and is not... I mean, even though it's the current system, it's not current gen system. I mean, it's 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 probably as much current gen as Nintendo was going to put out, but it's closer to the release of the PS5 and the Xbox 360 or the Xbox Series X than it is to the correct the one and the four. Correct. All right, and in the and in the end, it will probably be on the market for the more well. It's going to be on the market for more time with the X the, the Xbox X and the PS5 than it will the the four and the one. All right. All right, so we're going to bring up the close to the show. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I uh, appreciate you have been with us this long. Uh, Yield, let's start with your shout-out, sir. Uh, shout-out to the Brain 76 for some We Were Here Forever. Uh, shout-out to Nitro for uh, some Deep Rock Galactic. Uh, shout-out to Alex and Homer for some Rocket League Thursdays. Uh, shout-out to uh, Matt. Nitro, Rick, uh, uh, everybody else who was hanging out in the Twitch chat. Um, shout out to Tricky and Alex for recording the night, and that'll do me this week, I think. Alex, your shout outs. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to the community, the fans, the fuel to the fire of this trophy horse. Uh, thank you all very much for your continued support of the show and, you know, here we are at, what, 558 and still going strong, and it's because of you all. So uh, thank you for all the fantastic members of our community for, you know, joining us on the Twitch chat, but also however you listen, we appreciate you. So um, thank you all. Thank you all so very much. Give a shout to Tricky and to Yield. Tricky especially because, um, you know, you kept it under three hours this week. <laughs> um, well, to, to, to be fair, okay, uh, 20 minutes of that was Gareth. To be fair, listeners, I told Tricky that if he ever had me edit a uh, handed me a three hour podcast to edit again, that it would be my resignation from the show. So, three hours last week, huh? Yeah, I mean it was a good episode. Man. It was a great episode. Well, I'm, but... I'm, I'm sure that it was, but man, see, that's why I told him you're gonna have to patch this in because I'm like I'm not sitting here for longer than two and a half hours. That's my limit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like 
Like, I mean, I would love to do extra episodes for, you know, the channel and do streaming and stuff. But when you hand me a three hour pod- podcast to, you know, edit and then I spend the next two days editing and a bulk of my free time editing the podcast is like, my gosh, three hours is so stupid long. Um, so no, it was a great and, episode. And, it's and, just and, so and, long. And, but then it, then you don't want to do the extra episode, right? So I. Well, and, and Giant Bomb does four hour episodes, so. You know what? They honestly, I, I used to love Giant Bomb. Like, I, I mean, they. I love, I used to listen to their podcast and I stopped doing it because my God, it's so fucking long. It's way too long. That is way too long. Man. And, and it, it, like, I understand that, you know, some of our listeners talked about that they want longer episodes and that's fine, but it gets to a point where you're turning away new people because your episodes so, are so long. And, and really, you know, Daryl's talked about how he doesn't listen to every episode, episode of the show anymore because, you know, he works from home a lot and he doesn't have the time. So like part of it is like being respectful of other people's time because, like there are some podcasts that I listen to are super long and it kind of is like, I can't add a new podcast to rotation. Cause at times I barely make it through the week. You know, I, sometimes I had to catch up on what I already listened to. So I don't know. I feel like our, our sweet spot is definitely below two hours, but certainly below three hours. Uh, I would say my sweet spot, 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Matt G says giant bomb sucks. Now I've never listened to a giant bomb episode, never got involved in giant bomb, but I just heard their, their podcast episodes are like four hours long. Well, well, unfortunately, like, I mean, they had a death like uh, Ryan Davis passed <coughs> away years ago and he was a big part of that team. And Jeff Gerstmann left and Vinny Caravella, like he left and Alex Shoemaker. So basically a lot of the people who started Giant Bomb are now gone. And I don't even know what their makeup of the team is now. So but I, I stopped listening a long time ago. It was a great podcast. And those guys really knew their stuff and they were funny and they all gelled together. They had a great rapport. Um, but yeah, like, I don't care. Four hours is just way too long. It, like split it up into different episodes and release two episodes a week or something. Don't do don't do four straight hours. That's a lot. Well, well okay, but e- either if you do four hours and you've listened to two shows, you still listen to four hours of content that week. What's the difference between one like, show or that's, two? That's like that's more manageable. I don't know. It just seems more manageable than staring at a four hour podcast. Because like I said, how much time do all of our listeners or do we even if we listen to podcasts? How much time do we have to sit there and listen to a podcast with all what we do? Like. So if you listen to one four-hour podcast and there's another, like, I don't know, it just seems like too long to me. And it just seems like would fit in people's lives better if, you know, podcasts were less. The less, uh, the shorter your podcast, the better it fits in everybody's life. Yeah. All right. So before I do my shout-outs, uh, be sure to subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, we're releasing uh, Last of Us recap episodes. We're all caught up now. You're going to get them every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Uh, we're going to watch the show Sundays, record on Mondays, and release them on Tuesdays at uh, 8 a.m. Uh, they're also being released on the Loop Brothers Patreon because I'm doing it with Daryl. Uh, so go check those out. Subscribe. I want to thank everybody that is a Patreon subscriber. I don't have the list up right now, uh, but I just saw somebody else just subscribed, and now I feel bad about not mentioning their name. So can you guys vape for a second while I bring it up? Vape. I, vape. Vamp. That's the word I was trying to say. Vamp. Vape. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm sure I'm sure that you guys put together a good episode for the uh, – Okay, the three of the last of us. Well, what I was going to get to a point. And I guess I can't make it now because you're done. You're well, right. I, I, I was okay. going to say I've, I've been seeing the side by sides on Facebook of 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 this is the game, and then this is the scene in the show, and I've been sitting there going, you know what? You need to play the Last of Us. I, I, I <laughs> do. All right. So our, our patrons are Rob Stevens, Matt G, Andrew, Gareth, Daryl, Curtis. Redbeard, Rick, Nitro, and Felicia. Thank you very much for being Patreon subscribers. Appreciate all the love and support you guys give us. Uh, Go check out those episodes. Uh, Now, back to you, Yield. I've watched all three episodes, and actually the fourth episode is starting right now, currently, as we're speaking. So I'm going to, as soon as I'm done with this, I am going to go watch that. Um, I have to say... This is the best video game adaptation I've ever seen. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a, uh, I'm a super fan of the game. This is very well done. I, I saw something that was very interesting. I saw a, vi- a video popped up on my Facebook feed, and it was of Troy Baker. And he was talking about, about the adaptation in the video game. And at the very end, he was like... I, I, he, I forget how he encompassed it all together, but he kind of ended it by basically saying that it's it's not the show is not a retelling of the game. It's a telling of the story in a different perspective or it, a different way. 
And I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Because we're all sitting here thinking that it's it's not a 100% one for one, obviously, but basically we're, we're following the game. And he was like, it's just a different telling of the same story. And I was like, oh, this that's interesting of a neat perspective on it, I guess is what I want to say. Just to give you an, uh, an example of what he's meaning there, episode three, which came out last week, the entire hour was dedicated to Bill and Frank's relationship. I heard about that. They were able to go more in depth into it. Right. So now we actually see Frank. We know where Frank came from. We see the relationship between them. So it's it's telling the story, but it's giving you perspectives that you normally don't know. Like uh Joel being in the uh in the QZ in the in the beginning of the game. We just know that him and Tess are in the QZ and that they leave shortly after to take Ellie to where she's going. But you get like kind of like an inside uh, look at what Joel was actually doing in the QZ. What he had to do to get the things he had to do so he could barter and all that other stuff. And there's different tellings. Now, there, there's changes. Some I like, some I don't like. Um, but I, I got to tell you, they're staying very faithful to the original story. But the show is providing those questions that were never answered in the game. Not that they were, like, lacking or, like, oh, I wish I would have known this. But you get this, like, inside track of, like, oh, okay, that makes more sense in the grand scheme of things because now I understand what Joel's motivation is for doing doing this or what Tess was doing or what Ellie was doing. You know, it. I, I, I know you're going to wait to watch the show, but if I was you... I'd watch this week for week because it's absolutely freaking great. And and hopefully when Yield watches it, there he has access to the HBO like behind the scenes because they like after every episode they explain why like they talk about each episode and explain to some of the decisions they made. And Neil Druckmann is on there, and I think a lot of the reasoning behind decisions they've made with the show versus the game are you know they make sense. And you know they they talked about in regards to episode three, you know if they're going to deviate from the game in any meaningful way, they kind of ask themselves, well, is what we're doing instead better? Because if it's not better, we're not going to do it. So the only th- the only reason they deviate from the game is if they can come up with something better than what's in the games. If it's just as good or just the same, then they're not going to deviate a lot. Um, but that's the reason that we got the episode that we did in episode three is because it's been you know pretty well received. But it's because they felt that exploring that relationship with Bill and Frank was better than anything else they could add at that point. So and, I agree with them. It was a really good episode. And uh, I mean, I mean, let's not shy away from it. There is a little controversy behind it. A lot of people that just you know, are not okay with what was uh, shown in the episode. And the only thing I'm going to tell you is if you have a problem with that, don't watch the fucking show because everybody knew that Bill was gay that played the game. If you didn't catch that reference, I mean, I could, I could ask Yield right now. Yield, how did you know Bill was gay in the game? Uh, there was one small reference. but well, I... Forget. I'm immediately going to the to the spot of of when they're dr- when they're driving away and Ellie's looking at the magazines. That's exactly the point. That's exactly what it is. And, and I, okay, okay. I, I'm, I'm like, was there another one that I missed? No. Nope. Was it that one? That was the one. And a lot of things I see is like, why did you turn Bill gay? I'm like, Bill's been gay since the yeah, game came you, out. Yeah, that, that's, that's the way he was written from the get go. You missed out. So. Uh, but all right, we're not going to go into that. Go listen to the Patreon episodes. Uh, you can subscribe for just a dollar and get all those episodes. Uh, so please go do that. Uh, also check out the merchandise. Um, and I have a special announcement coming for the Patreon coming soon. Uh, I'm not ready to make that announcement yet because I have to work out the fine details. Uh, but pay attention to that because it's probably going to hit our social medias and whatnot. Uh, my shout outs. Shout out to the goddess. Shout out to Sweet Mama D. Shout out to you guys. Uh, shout out to Ashley. Uh, I'm sorry for keeping Alice away for three hours last week. That was not my intention, but I think it was a good quality episode that we got into. Got a lot of positive feedback about our, our conversation about Hogwarts Legacy. So I'm glad to hear that because I was very nervous to have that conversation. Shout out to all the listeners. Thank you very much. Shout out to Latin Legacy. Shout out to Matt G. Shout out to everybody that joined us in the Twitch chat. And if there's nothing else, until next week, happy trophy hunting.
Five seconds of silence. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Just over two hours. Two oh one twenty seven. Two oh one two oh one twenty seven match you guys. That's right. Okay. I gotta I'm gonna mute myself a second because uh exploits screwed up like 30 minutes into the show, and I got to stop it, man, or force stop it now. Hold on. <laughs> 